my mother, who is 83, has had uh, both vaccines from Pfizer and had absolutely no, not even a sore arm, apparently. Well, that's good news. Yeah, so. Hi, Andy, I think we are live. Okay, we are. Can you bring up the faces again? Oh, wow. All right, let's see who's our, Erica, are you on? Okay. Yes, morning, Andy. Good morning. Do we have a quorum, Erica? Uh, do you want me to do the roll call? Well, let's let's do the other stuff first. Well, okay. good morning, everyone. Nice to see your smiling faces. Definitely an exciting time that we're in right now. So uh, it's amazing that we're all able to still function with all the stuff we're being bombarded with. But this too shall pass. So with, with that said, uh, we'll go ahead and call the meeting to order. And uh, introductions of our new members. Uh, if you just... Uh, when I call your name, if you just say hello and you have something you want to give us a clue on about what's going on with you, go ahead and do that. So we'll start with uh, uh, Chris Kate, who is not new. Is Chris here? Present. I'm sorry. Yes, there. There you are. Hi, Chris. How are I'm you? Here. Good morning. Okay. Good morning. Who are, you, who are you representing? You're a commissioner? A new? City of San Diego. City of San Diego. Okay, you were on before, though, right? It's not a new. Correct. I was the I was uh, Councilmember Kersey's alternate, and now I'm the 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 head. Okay, welcome aboard. We have uh, Nora Vargas. Nora, are you here? She is running a little bit late. She's on a COVID call right now, but she'll be hopping on. I'm her policy advisor, Rosa. Sorry about that. Okay, when she comes on, just uh, have her say hello. Yes, of hello. course. Thank you. Joel Anderson, is Joel on? Yeah, no, Andy, I just got a, uh, this is Keen. I, I got an email from his staff. He is uh, unable to attend today, late notice, but he says hello. In fact, he's saying it right now. Hello, commission. Okay. All right, hello, Joel. Um, Marnie Van Wilpert, are you here? Yes, I'm here, <laughs> thank you. Okay. What can you tell us about yourself? Uh, I am, I'm actually a Mark Kersey successor, but I am going to be the alternate to uh, council member Chris Kate here in San Diego. Okay, good. Well, welcome aboard. Thank you. Anyone we've missed that's brand new? Okay. We well. got them all and uh, uh, I just want to add that I got to uh, talk to all of our new commissioners. They're oathed up, they're ready to go. And uh, I'm glad that uh, uh, I think we have, uh, with the exception of Mr. Anderson, we'll have a full house today. Okay, great. All right, so we'll uh, now proceed with the roll call. Erica? Okay. Commissioner Vanderlyn? Present. Thank you. Ah, Commis a minute. Commissioner Desmond? Here. Commissioner McKenzie? Here. Commissioner Willis? Here. Commissioner Salas? Here. Commissioner Kate? Here. Commissioner Vargas? She will She's be here. Physically, she will be here. She's not physically present right now, yes. Okay. Commissioner Wells? I'm here. Alternate Commissioner Mathis? Here. Alter alternate Commissioner Anderson is absent. Alternate Commissioner Lump? Here. And then Alternate Commissioner McNamara? Here. And Alternate Commissioner Von Willepert? Present. Okay. There is a virtual quorum with eight members present. All right, thank you. Uh, Joe, where are you? Oh, there you are. Would you yeah. lead in the pledge, please? Sure. Ready, begin. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. 
Uh, agenda review, uh, King. Uh, thank you, uh, Chair. And uh, again, good morning, Commissioners, your Executive Officer, Keen Simon. So we do have one change to the agenda, and that is uh, we are pulling item 7A. That's the draft municipal service review uh, for the Poway region. Uh, pulling the item will allow uh, staff the needed time to uh, tie down a couple of loose ends that uh, came up for us at the end of last week in conversations with the city of Poway. Uh, I do anticipate, though, coming back with 7A uh, as early as your March meeting. Uh, now, that said, Chair, I do want to just take the opportunity as the Commission and our guests digest the rest of this agenda to note we are uh, once again set up uh, in this virtual format to uh, receive public comment in one of two ways. Uh, there are a number of uh, persons out there that have already pre-registered to speak on uh, specific items uh, uh, on the agenda and staff will bring uh, those forward uh, in concert with the chair's direction as we go through the agenda. And then also, and this is a, a comment to the viewing public, uh, we can take uh, email, uh, email comments in real time. Uh, instructions to do so are provided on the agenda page itself as well as on the website. And then chair, on both fronts, uh, there's gonna be some pauses in the action as we uh, go back and forth between uh, public comments for those uh, who have registered to speak as well as checking our uh, inboxes. So bear with us, uh, uh, it might be muddled a bit, but we'll get through it. Uh, so other than that, Chair, uh, we are good to go with the one comment that we are pulling 7A, so thank you. Okay, thank you. You do, you do, do bring to us a rather energetic agenda today, King. We tried. Wait till wait till next meeting too. I don't know how many pages <laughs> this is, but it looks like a, a mini book. I also see a new face right over here. Is that Priscilla? Yes. Yes. Uh, hello. <laughs> new to me. How long has she been on board, King? Uh, at least uh, five months. Still on probation. So okay. this is an important meeting for Priscilla, Andy. <laughs> All right. <laughs> no pressure. No pressure. Yeah. All right. Don't worry about it. We're just a bunch of really kind people. <laughs> we might look a little mad, but we're kind. Okay. Thank you. Uh, for the new commissioners, this uh, this size of agenda is kind of normal for us. I would. Uh, Keen does several good things for us besides just the daily stuff of being the executive officer. Provides the uh, cliff notes, which really help. You don't have to read every page, you get to highlight it that way and don't spend uh, a week or so just reading through the agenda. So thank you for that, Keen. And also, as you're new, if you have any issues or questions that you think may not be very smart, just recognize that we all started once and some of like me are still learning. So don't be afraid to speak out. Also, I want to encourage you to engage in the process. We're going to have, we're going to talk today about a couple of ad hoc committees. I would encourage you to uh, step forward on that. I have some people in mind myself, but this, we want this to be an interactive group. Uh, from my perspective, it's one of the best functioning of the governmental agencies. And so welcome aboard to that, not to take away from the importance of your regular job, if you will. So thank you for doing that. All right. Uh, so that we finished the agenda review, the public comment and a related request. Yeah, so uh, let me check in uh, first with Erica. I don't believe we had any registered speakers uh, just for public comment, but can you confirm that? Yeah, there are no registered speakers for public comment and as of yet, no live email comments. Uh, so we are good to go. No co uh, public comments either way, Chair. Okay, well, thank you for that. If someone does pop on, just let us know. Now we have the uh, number five, the consent items, which are rather lengthy. Uh, are those uh, posted up, Keen? Do, do we have a, a, a page to show on the, on the screen of the consent items? If not, um, I can go ahead and read them, just uh, the titles into the record. Uh, sorry, Keen, I did not prepare a power slide for that one. That's, that's okay. So uh, commission, bear with me. So there are, uh, a handful of consent items, all with uh, various recommendations. For the record, 
Five A is approval of me meeting minutes for December seventh. Five uh, B ratification of payments uh, made by your executive officer and or received for November, December, 2020. Uh, 5C budget update for 2021. Uh, 5D is protest hearing results for the Valley Center Community Services District reorganization. Uh, 5E progress report on our annual work plan and a proposed amendment. Uh, 5F, ratification of an administrative approval, Estrada Vijas View Place outside of agency wastewater service agreement uh, with the County Sanitation District. That is a long title. Uh, 5G, current proposals and related activities. That's just for information. And then also for information, 5H uh, is just uh, your new special district advisory committee roster. That is the consent calendar, Chair. Okay, thank you. For commissioners to say no, that both regular commissioners and alternates can speak on, on any of these issues. So with that, are there any comments or any questions of the consent items? I'll uh, move approval of the consent items, Desmond. Thank you, Jim. I'll second it, Salas. Okay, thank you, Mary. All right, so roll call vote, please, Erica. Okay, Commissioner Wells. Yes. Commissioner Kate. Uh, yes. Commissioner Vargas. I don't think she's on yet. Okay. So Commissioner Salas. Yes. Commissioner McKenzie. Uh. Commissioner Willis. Aye. Commissioner Vanderlyn? Yes. And Commissioner Desmond? Yes. Okay. So for Keene, since there, Commissioner Vargas is not here, do, does someone so, else? Uh, yeah, the vote is 7 0 with uh, okay. Commissioner Vargas uh, um, uh, absent and no alternate for her. Okay. So seven in favor with one absent. The motion passes. Okay, thank you. All right, so that takes us to um, item six, is that correct? Correct, Chair. So I will go ahead and uh, introduce this item uh, uh, and then I'm gonna hand off the bulk of the presentation to our analyst, Linda Heckenkamp. Uh, but 6A, the final report in related actions, this is the Municipal Service Review on resource conservation districts. And I am guessing, Commission, this is the uh, headliner for the majority of our uh, public attendees. Uh, what I would like to do is just offer up uh, some observations and some related context. Uh, and I'm doing so because not only are there a couple of new commissioners uh, among the ranks, but perhaps more so than any other uh, project that uh, I've been fortunate enough to work on here in San Diego over the last four years. Uh, this has brought to LAFCO, this project has brought to LAFCO a number of uh, people and organizations and agencies that I don't know had ever either heard of LAFCO or at least were not terribly familiar with some of the ins and outs. So with that in mind, uh, before the commission, uh, is the last leg of what has been a scheduled and lengthy municipal service review on resource conservation districts in San Diego County. And under statute, this is our uh, opportunity every five years to do a check-in and to look at the world of resource conservation services relative to the commission's responsibilities and ultimately to provide some order uh, and um, an insurance of uh, efficiency when it comes to these services. Uh, and that means that this commission dives into uh, looking at the uh, availability, the need, and ultimately the adequacy of services relative to community needs. And the commission determines what are the community uh, needs. And there are these three concrete purposes commission that come out of the service review that I think serve not only as benchmarks for you to decide when has staff hit the mark and when has a study you know, met its uh, natural conclusion versus needing more work. And these three concrete purposes start with the idea that 
uh, you by way of the legislature uh, are required to take the information from this document and update the spheres of influence for the affected agencies. In fact, we're gonna do that as part of a related item 6B. And of course, the, the idea is you update the spheres of influence to demarc uh, what you believe to be the agency's appropriate and future service area and boundary. Okay, so that's the very first concrete purpose of this document. You are to inform that process. Well, relatedly, uh, the second concrete purpose here, Commission, is that we are to have provided you a report that's going to adequately inform you over the next five years in considering any boundary changes that may come out of it, whether it involves the three affected agencies themselves, and I should say for the record, the three affected agencies being Greater San Diego RCD, Mission RCD uh, in Upper San Luis Rey RCD, right? So the second feature is you are to use this document going forward anytime a boundary change is proposed uh, involving these agencies or the affected territory uh, uh, itself. And then third and finally, and this is an important, important uh, feature of uh, the municipal service review process, um, should you feel it appropriate, this is the document under state law that gives you the power to initiate your own reorganization proposals. Uh, and in this case, should you see it fit, this would be the uh, opportunity for you to initiate your own uh, formation, consolidation, uh, or dissolution of resource conservation district services, right? So th these are the three thresholds that you should have in mind in ultimately answering the question we have for you today, uh, which is, um, are you good with the report? Do you believe it's met its uh, uh, mission and met its mark, right? So keep that in mind. So now to go over the actual report, the key recommendations uh, and conclusions, I'm gonna ask uh, Linda to take over the presentation. And then Linda, at the very end, if you could punt it back to me, I do wanna go on record and just identify by all of the correspondence that we have we have received before, Chair, perhaps you take uh, and open up the hearing. So Linda, with that, the floor is yours. Yes, thank you, Keen. And do if we could pull up the PowerPoint, please, that'd be great. Again, I'm an analyst here. I'm Linda Heckenkamp. I am the project manager for the Municipal Service Review on the Resource Conservation Districts in San Diego, San Diego County, and I'm happy to say that this is the first ever uh, MSR in final draft form that I'll be presenting. The first draft came in December, and it was followed by a 45-day comment period. Um, and let's go to the next slide, Do And just to echo um, Keen later in the next slide about why we do MSRs, but firstly, let's talk about the background of RCDs. So RCDs are very special and unique. They came out of the response to the Dust Bowl era in the 1930s. It was a national response. And over the years, they've kind of drilled down and became a state level response to now a more county and district, uh, special district response. At the height of RCDs in San Diego County, there are 15, three remain today. And we'll be talking about those in our MSR. Next slide, do. And just a little bit of an echo of what our executive officer has already said, but why is the MSR overview so important? LAFCO is statutorily required to do MSRs every five to eight years to periodically look at a macro level independent analysis of special districts and cities. This informs the sphere of influence updates, and as Keen said, um, gives the commission the power to do any reorganization uh, scenarios. And let's go to our special districts, the three RCDs. So as Drew pulls up the Google Earth, we're gonna take a little trip today, and we're gonna look at the geographical um, locations of each of the RCDs. So as I said before, um, two of the RCDs are uh, relatively old. They came out in the 1940s and still have their original jurisdictional boundary. And I'm just gonna go through them one by one. Uh, the 
from oldest to newest. And in the 19, in 1942, Upper San Luis Rey RCD in the yellow was established and uh, they don't have a formal office. They do contract with Ulema MWD for bookkeeping and now um, a general manager type of service. Uh, they have one conservation biologist that they contract with as well. And they have um, uh, an, an active board made of very legacy um, farmers and growers in the area. And looking at the green, Mission RCD was formed in 1944. They have an office in the lovely Fallbrook area. They have about five staff and um, their jurisdictional boundary has about 124,000 people. And looking at the majority of uh, the RCD layout, which is the purple, that is um, RCD of Greater San Diego County. That came to be in 1995 through a series of consolidations of smaller RCDs. Um, as I mentioned before, a trend in the county as well as a trend in the state has dwindled down the number of RCDs uh, due to a number of factors, whether it was limited uh, tax revenue um, from Prop 13 or competing for grants and services. There is just a sort of folding that has happened over the years. And now we're left with three today. Um, the greater San Diego County RCD has about 1.5 million people and Upper San Luis Rey RCD has about, um, I'm sorry, um, about, yeah, uh, also 1.5 thousand people in it. I mean, let's just move on to the next slide. I think I've covered the geographical geographical boundary pretty well. So I'm gonna cover the central themes and recommendations. They are largely unchanged from the draft MSR, but I will go over the notable uh, recommendations as well as one addition to each of the themes and the recommendations. Uh, so the themes are really the conclusions or the discoveries that we've, um, we have, been able to delve into through the analysis of learning about the RCDs. As I've said before, this is the first RC, this is the first MSR on RCDs. So this is a bit of an introductory level uh, to the commission about the services and about what RCDs really are. It doesn't capture the performance measures because as I am going to state that um, the principal act, which is uh, number three, has is really outdated. It has not been updated since 1972. It um, refers to a RC to RCD commission that is also inactive. Um, I do have an update about this. So we've been working with the California um, associations of RCD. Their executive director Karen Burr has informed us that uh, they will be using this MSR as a primer to kind of go forward with a legislative update. Uh, we will be a resource to them, so we're pretty happy about that. Uh, number four, RCDs are kind of operating as a nonprofit arm. They do have limited tax revenue, but most of their operations um, come from non nonprofit grant finding and um, things of that nature. So they're, they're not an enterprise district. They're not fully based on tax revenue. They're based more on grants. And then number five, um, you will heal, you were, excuse me, you will hear later in the discussions during public comment about um, boundaries. And in LAFCO eyes, of course, boundaries matter. Special districts and city need to provide services within their, uh, their service boundaries or by special approval with contractual service agreements. And number eight is our addition. We have um, gotten comment based on the last draft that uh, Upper San Luis Rey RCD is involved with a groundwater sustainability um, plan and it may or may not have been activated to do so. We have a working group going on that will uh, further discuss that role. 
And next slide, please. So these recommendations, um, again, we went over in December. There's one addition. I'm going to kind of skim over the more notable ones. They're either directed towards LAFCO, the affected agencies being the resource conservation districts, or uh, stakeholders as well. So starting with number one, LAFCO to periodically review resource conservation districts. Number four, uh, LAFCO to work with stakeholders to update the outdated principal act. Next slide, Joe. And number six, the RCDs should voluntarily figure out how to work within their jurisdictional boundaries. Number seven, uh, the RCDs are reminded that they are special districts and they cannot self-exempt um, when they may or may not be in violation of government code 56133. And next slide, do. And then number 11 is what I briefly went over before. Uh, Upper San Luis Rey RCD is involved in Groundwater Sustainable Management Act. It is a part of the Palma Valley Sub Basin GSA. And uh, there is a community party that um, is challenging their validity in the GSA. We have a current working group made up of a few special district advisory members continuing this conversation. Um, and we have a few comment letters as well about this. And then what Keen will be touching on in 6B, which is number 13, there are no changes to jurisdictional boundary at this time. LAFCO recommends that we affirm the spheres with no changes. This really wraps up my staff presentation. Uh, I'd like to thank each of the special districts, the RCDs for all of their time and effort in creating this first ever municipal service review. I, I understand it was um, you know, a lot of back and forth just because they weren't really accommodated to what LAFCO is trying to do. And I really appreciate all their time and effort. And um, I'd also like to extend thank yous to the California of RCDs the California Association of LAFCOs, uh, our two consultants that helped us out with this MSR, and as well as the numerous community members that sent uh, feedback letter letters and comment letters. Uh, we really appreciate all the feedback on this first ever MSR. And with that, I'll uh, kick it back to Keen for any additional comments. Thank you, uh, Linda, outstanding job. And, and thank you, Linda, for taking on uh, a rather unique and uh, uh, challenging project uh, uh, in and of itself. So commission, I just wanna double down. There are two issues here that have legs to them. Uh, and they are going to, at least through the eyes of staff, uh, persist after you take action on this MSR. Uh, the first issue is, uh, and Linda again referenced it about boundaries need to matter. And so um, at least two of the three agencies have established service, uh, services beyond their jurisdictional boundaries. Um, now there are reasons for them. They differ amongst the two agencies. The two agencies I'm referencing, Greater San Diego and Mission. Uh, we understand uh, that uh, these are important activities to the business model of both uh, uh, RCDs. But at the end of the day, what we are recommending as part of our purposeful pause is that we spend some good bonding time with uh, these agencies over the next 60 months uh, and get their boundaries right. And that means uh, syncing the services to either come into their boundaries or if the commission thinks it's appropriate, expand those boundaries to reflect those service areas. Uh, either way, a fundamental uh, issue needs to be uh, that if we have uh, multiple R uh, RCDs, uh, there should not be overlapping services uh, or service boundaries. So that's gonna require some thoughtful uh, analysis going forward. Um, and I'm gonna leave it at that with the uh, opportunity to go into more detail for commission. Uh, the other issue that has legs to it uh, is something that kind of admittedly took staff flat-footed uh, back in December. Uh, we weren't necessarily focusing in on the role of Upper San Luis Rey RCD uh, and whether it had or, or, or doesn't have 
legal standing to be in the GSA for Palma Valley. Um, the San Luis Rey Indian Water Authority has brought it to our attention. And as we have now in an updated recommendation, uh, we think it's appropriate that we isolate that question and that we prepare an addendum uh, and we come back to the commission with uh, uh, our thought out uh, conclusion. Uh, we have no illusions though that that is a significant topic and has uh, ramifications going forward. So uh, that in part is why we wanna isolate the question uh, extracted out of this RCD and come back to you uh, maybe as early as your next meeting or, or in April. So those are the two key issues that are gonna have um, uh, work to do beyond this, uh, this MSR. Chair, we have a number of people who are registered to speak on this item. I want to just note for the record, because there was some discussion about uh, what correspondence uh, has come before the commission on this topic. I just want for the record to uh, be clear that uh, in the final report that Linda prepared as one of the append uh, append appendices, uh, we have uh, put in there all the comment letters that we received uh, before we hit print on January 22nd. So in the final report, there are comment letters from, uh, well, there's a joint comment letter from, on November 30th from the San Diego County Water Authority and a number of other North County districts. There's a December 3rd letter from Farm Bureau, a December 4th letter from San Luis Rey Indian Water Authority, uh, a, a December 17th letter from Upper San Luis Rey RCD, uh, a January 8th letter from Greater San Diego. Uh, and then on January 20th, another joint letter from the Water Authority and others in North County. And then finally, the last letter in your final report that's commenting on this is from January uh, or from the California uh, Resource Conservation Districts Association dated January 22nd. Separately, Commission, there are six supplemental uh, letters that we received uh, over the last uh, uh, week. Those have all been posted on the website. Uh, they start with San Diego County Water Authority, uh, provided a standalone letter on January 25th, Upper San Luis Rey RCD, a standalone letter on January 27th, Mission RCD on January 29th, Uima Municipal Water District on the 28th, uh, Palma Valley CSD weighed in on January 29th, and then last but not least, last uh, night, we got a letter from Bill Pellman with uh, NASM uh, Law Firm uh, representing the San Luis Rey Indian Water Authority. All of these are part of the uh, record. Should the commission proceed and uh, receive and file the report as we're recommending, uh, we will catalog all of these comment letters into a final appendix. Separately, we are also asking the commission to adopt the resolution in your packet that would make the necessary uh, findings uh, under statute in completing this MSR. So there's two actions before you receive and file the uh, MSR report and then adopt the resolution uh, that makes the necessary findings. So uh, the uh, ministerial and technical items aside, Chair, we do have public comments. If there are initial uh, uh, questions of staff, we can address those now. Uh, or uh, after you hear from uh, the public. Uh, your call, Chair, and I will turn it back to you. Thank you. I'm not sure that I opened the public hearing, so I'll do that now, retroactive to whenever it should have been put in place. Uh, are there any questions, comments uh, by the commissioners before we open it up to the uh, public comment? Seeing or hearing none. Uh, just a reemphasize the quality of your staff work here with Linda and, and you, Keen and the rest of the staff. It's amazing. I, the more I read the report, the more in depth that you went with all the financials and all the other stuff. I was, I think you maybe if this is a deeper dive than you thought it might've been when you started and it's looks like it's gonna have some ripples going out from here. So uh, commission standby on this one. We'll be hearing certainly more today from the commenters uh, and and the action we take will also cause some other things to come in place. So just stand by for that. And if you have knowledge on this as we move along, please weigh in on this because I've, 
I'm looking at forming an ad hoc committee, not to muddy the water, but to see if uh, a committee of say three people uh, could assist in this whole issue because there's gonna be a lot of conversations back and forth between the agencies and not including the tribal people. So uh, there's gonna be a lot of work to do here. We might be able to maybe smooth the path a little bit uh, and or perhaps uh, assist the staff in their work. So with that, uh, Erica, would you call start calling off the uh, speakers, uh, registered speakers? Sure. As of right now, I have 12 registered speakers. And then I also have two um, email comments that I received that I will read later. So to start for item 6A, I will start with Darcy Cook. Hello, Darcy. How are you? Sorry, good morning. Can you hear me? I can hear you now, yes. Welcome oh, aboard. I'm connected. I've been having computer troubles this morning. I just want to take a really quick minute and introduce myself. I'm the new district manager at Mission Resource Conservation District, and I've only been serving since mid-May. So a lot of this is um, somewhat new to me, and I'm learning as I go. But I just want to state that um, MRCD is very interested in working collabor collaboratively both with the other RCDs and with LAFCO on this and other issues. And I've submitted a lengthy response to the recommendations to the MSR report to LAFCO, um, which are now part of the record. So that's it. Thank you very much for your time. Okay, thank you. Next, Erica. Okay. Next speaker, I will call on Heather Conklin. Hi, good morning. Good morning, Heather. Uh, thank you for giving me up the opportunity to speak this morning. Um, I am actually the newest board member for Mission Resource Conservation District. And I wanted to take this chance, um, like Darcy, to say thank you for uh, the learning experience going through this MSR process. And I wanted to just offer a couple of thoughts, having gone through this uh, during the December meeting, uh, reading through the report and hearing the discussion and the concerns of our partner agencies, our community uh, through this process. So at the beginning of this agenda item, it was stated that boundaries need to matter. And I would like to go ahead and say, in addition to boundaries, the actual real service provision to the areas within those boundaries also really matters. And if for some reason, uh, boundaries are incredibly large, limited resources or something that uh, our city is challenged with on a lot, a lot of the time, it's really, really, really uh, challenging to serve all those areas, especially in a particularly large territory and again with a small operating budget. So I would like to go ahead and ask the commission to consider that real service provision um, be a big component of decisions moving forward with how our CD boundaries um, and jurisdictions are set up. And with that being said, um, the goal of RCDs were really designed to be the boots on the ground to make sure that we're providing education, technical assistance, and actual services to the community, uh, including residents, businesses, local organizations, and of course our partnering agencies. And so that real service provision, that community connection, that presence in a region is really critical to what RCDs do and ultimately the service that RCDs provide and that is our intent is to serve the public. So thank you for your consideration. Okay, uh, two questions. One, what is your biggest concern about this whole process? So um, again, I haven't gone through this process personally. My biggest concern with this process is, I don't know that there is enough discussion, I think in terms of what RCDs actually do and really understanding the role that they play. Um, and again, we're, we're, so we are smaller, but we are in North County. And I wanna make sure that North County and the needs of North County are actually represented by RCDs. However, that ultimately ends up being the case that we don't lose services that, um, that everybody is still being provided for here because North County is a critical region. We have a tremendous amount of agriculture here. We need to make sure that our natural resources here in North County are being conserved effectively. We need to make sure that the services are being provided consistently. And we need to make sure, especially the needs of the farmers are being met because that actually is an important sector to not just the North County region, but San Diego County as a whole. 
Okay, thank you. And how would you define real services? It's the boots on the ground. It's, it's the reaching out to the community. It's providing workshops and educational content and out, doing outreach to the community. It's not necessarily just about telling people what to do, but it's about showing them how to do that. It's about being able to go out into the field and show them, to work with them, to be that resource that's actually, that they can, that they can access easily. It's about approachability and accessibility. So that presence really, really matters. Thank you. And Darcy, I didn't ask you those questions. I'll ask them now. What's, what's your major concern about this whole process? Um, I, think I'm, I think my major concern is that I think we all really just need to work together to address all these pressing needs. You know, with COVID, with, you know, potentially an oncoming recession, with climate change, there are needs that are much bigger than our individual communities, but these needs need to be addressed at our communities. And, you know, to, to state a much overused term, I think we're better together. Um, and so I'd like to think of this as sort of a, a new start. Um, I know that there's, there's baggage um, and, you know, some of that um, is not that clear to me, but I would just like to work together for the greater good. Honestly. Okay, thank you. And how would you define real services? Um, I think Heather really uh, hit that nail on the head and that it's about approach for RCDs. It's about approachability. It's about knowing your community. It's about the trust that your community has to be able to reach out to understand these best practices um, to a non-regulatory agency. It's about understanding um, the, the demographic of your community the environmental issues in your community, the, um, uh, in, in, for example, in, in Fallbrook's case, we do a lot of ag work. So understanding the kinds of people that, that live and work in your community. Okay, thank you very much. Eric, the next speaker, please. Sure, the next speaker, um, Cheryl Landrum. Morning, Cheryl. Good morning. Thank you for uh, allowing me to speak today. My name is Cheryl Landrum, and I'm the executive director of the Resource Conservation District of Greater San Diego County. And um, you know, we we have uh, been working with LAFCO and and trying to resolve some boundary issues with Mission RCD for quite some time now. And one of the, the things that we had offered uh, almost a year and a half ago, when um, before Darcy came and their old district manage, manager was to resolve some of these issues through a consolidation. Uh, Mission has actually stated that they probably can't survive unless they are working outside of their boundaries. And we, we are also very involved with agriculture. We're working on the SALT grant with LAFCO. Um, we are working with the Carbon Cycle Institute on becoming the regional um, leader for a, our carbon farming programs here in San Diego County. Uh, we, we have a farm, Wild Willow Farm is ours. We also manage community gardens and we've done, a, um, we're on our third, uh, carbon, carbon farming plan right now in San Diego County as well. We don't want to lose any of our territory. We are functioning well in all of our territory. So we would rather, like Darcy says, better together, urge for a consolidation. And that's what we had come to the agreement, um, like I said, with the previous district manager, you know, keep that office going, keep all the programs ru running, no services would be disrupted, but we would be stronger together instead of both competing over funds, mostly in our territory, to allow them to uh, join us. We're a strong organization with no disruption in services. We do everything that Mission does. And um, so it, we do not 
want to interrupt our abilities to fund our organization and changing the boundaries could definitely make us weaker. So uh, we're willing to work with LAFCO. We've never worked outside of our, uh, well, we didn't realize we were working outside of our, our district when we were working within our sphere of influence. And any other time that we have worked in another RCD's territory um, with our forestry programs, that's been Upper San Luis Rey. We've always gone to Upper San Luis Rey for permission to do so and gone through LAFCO as well. So we're very um, interested in abiding by the rules and doing what's correct. And we just hope that you will work with us on this situation. Okay, so you. RCD is open to consolidation then with mission? Our, yes. I, you know, again, we felt uh, when Courtney and I sat down, we looked at the three options that we thought we had. And one was to um, con continue an MOU, which we had rescinded, which we knew our boards wouldn't do because the MOU we had with mission earlier was um, grossly taken advantage of, so we rescinded it. The other option was to consolidate and work together you know, keep that office and her in that position, but they would report to us. Um, and the third option was just to leave it alone and let LAFCO handle it. And we both decided that the best thing that we could do for our organizations and to resolve these issues was a consolidation. But... Uh, Is LAFCO the lead or one of your agencies being the lead? With our agency being the lead, you know, me being the executive director and say Darcy would have been the um, the manager of mission in that office in that territory. Well, how about would, negotiations? Who would you like to lead that discussion? I'm pardon me. Okay, if we if we proceed with a with a consolidation, who would you like to orchestrate that? I with, think LAFCO should. Okay. All right. Anything else then to add? I don't think so. Thank you, though, for okay, thank uh, again you. allowing me to speak. Okay. And Erica, next speaker, please. Okay, we have Andy Lyle. Good morning. Hello, Andy. Hello. Andy. My name is Andy Lyle, and I'm the president of the Upper San Luis Rey Resource Conservation District. Thank you for giving me the time to speak this morning. I appreciate the time and effort that has gone into this MSR process, and I want to personally thank Keen Simons and Linda Heckenkamp for the incredible work that went into it. That being said, I need to state my opposition to the new recommendation for the preparation of an addendum to address the Upper San Luis Rey RCD's authorization to provide water management. The proposed addendum should be removed and the draft that was presented in December should be adopted. The Sustainable Groundwater Management Act requires local agencies to form GSAs and work toward groundwater stability. The Upper San Luis Rey RCD, along with several other local agencies, have come together collaboratively and taken on this responsibility. I would like to quote the MSR that is before you now. The Upper San Luis Rey RCD was formed, and I quote, to assist landowners in implementing soil, water, and other land management practices in support of agrarian activities, end quote. This is the RCD's purpose, and we, like many other RCDs in the state, have taken on the responsibility of complying with the Sustainable Groundwater Management Act. As you have seen in the many letters supporting the Upper San Luis Rey RCD, we have a long history of water and soil conservation in Palma Valley and the surrounding communities. This along with our large sphere of influence in the basin make us natural partners in the Palma Valley GSA. We have been a supportive member since the very beginning and it's important we remain involved because Sigma has to be managed locally. Water is the most important resource for our agricultural community and we are honored to represent and serve in this capacity as we face the challenge of bringing groundwater stability to our basin. Again, Thank you for taking on this MSR project and we are supportive of the review except for the recommendation to prepare an addendum. It is clear that the Upper San Luis Rey RCD's purpose is to participate in water conservation and water management activities in our region. 
This is not the appropriate time and place to be questioning the state's determination that RCDs serve an important role in complying with this law. It is our goal to be a helpful resource for our community, and we look forward to working with LAFCO as we continue to serve in this capacity. Thank you. Okay, question for you. What's your biggest concern about proceeding with the addendum? My concern is that uh, this is a state law that we local agencies have to comply with, that we the, the state has mandated that local agencies come together and manage groundwater locally. The state is not equipped to do this. The state does not want to manage basins in, in, in across the state. They've made that clear to us. So in the letter you received apparently last night from uh, Mr. Pellman, Attorney Pellman, says at the very end of that uh, letter that as a result, the State Water Resources Control Board should manage, should establish a management plan and assume enforcement powers. So it appears that the attorney representing the Indian Water Authority would prefer that the state manage this basin and the state has demanded that the, that local agencies establish this basin. As you can imagine, it's things are better we will run this thing better because it's local and it's more meaningful to us. And this is, uh, this is our, our livelihood down here. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Any questions? From the commission? Okay. Erica, next speaker, please. Okay. The next speaker is Greg Common. Is Greg coming up here? I see him down there. Greg, are you on? Hey, Greg, you got your, you're muted. Thank you, sir. Technically challenged here. Uh, thank you for allowing me to speak this morning. I would first like to thank LAFCO and the staff for considerable time and effort put forth to develop the municipal service review. Did a great job on it. Uh, my name is Greg Kamen. And I'm a fourth generation farmer in the Palm Valley area. As a farmer with no access to imported water, relying solely on groundwater to maintain my ranch, I was encouraged to join the Upper San Luis Rivas uh, Resource Conservation District. As director on the board of the RCD, I was assigned to represent the RCD on the Palm Valley Groundwater Sustainability Agency and have been participating in the GSA activities since its inception. I have read the many correspondence and comments letters that were presented to LAFCO staff and commissioners. I would like to take this opportunity to impress upon the commissions, commissioners not only the importance of the RCD's participation in the GSA, but their legal right to do so. The RCD's participation is of utmost importance to the GSA as an advocate of those that would not currently be represented without it. Most notably, the thousands of acres of agricultural and tribal lands within the basin. Water is our most precious resource, and a resource the RCD is dedicated to preserve, maintain, and sustain so that all can equally continue their current and future needs of it. With an RCD board consisting of farmers and a tribal representation, we can achieve that. Legally, it's been clearly presented to the by the correspondence submitted to LAFCO in the detailed letters from the GSA participants and their attorneys, the RCD has been actively engaged in all activities for which it was created and granted the legal authority during the RCD Act. These, in, these activities include water conservation and management, water quality improvement, soil erosion control, riparian habitat and species maintenance, and the management among, and species management among other services. The farmers and the community of Palm Valley, including certain opposition and political interests, have benefited from the projects the RCD has undertaken in conjunction with the National Resource Conservation Services and other federal and state agencies for decades. This interference between local landowners and the state and federal governments were, in large part, the reason the RCDs were formed. Once again, the RCD stepped forward through their participation in development of a groundwater sustainability plan that will be fair for all beneficial users in the basin of groundwater. This is an endeavor they were asked to do or tasked to do through Sigma Law. I encourage the commission to not allow themselves to be used to accomplish political goals that have little to do with water conservation and water management powers 
the RCD has been implementing for decades. I support the MSR, except for the recommendation to prepare the addendum. Thank you. Thank you. What's your biggest concern about this whole process? Uh, biggest concern, again, is that, that the RCD needs to be part of this to help represent farmers and agricultural community and the tribes as well, uh, like myself, that don't have access to municipal water. There's no pipeline for me to buy water from. So the groundwater is the key institute here. And without a voice in this GSA and it being run by state or, or higher authorities, we won't have a voice. And being that this is a resource that we all share, there's enough water for all of us to do what we need to do. And, and we can make that happen if, if we work together and have a voice. In it. If it's controlled elsewhere or, or larger state run programs, um, that's my concern that they, I won't have a voice. And the other farmers with me won't have a voice. How is it working now? Uh, it's working really well now. Are you referring to how the GSA going forward has been working? Yeah, the way, the 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 way it's operating now. How's... I'm sorry. The way it's operating now. The way now. it's operating now has been... The, the way that GSA has been operating now is, is quite good. Everybody's in uh, the same page. Um, I haven't... We haven't had any discrepancies. Everybody wants to achieve the task that the state has made us uh, required to do. Um, and it's been going really smoothly and the report is going forward and we're on schedule to perform the report uh, on its due date right now. Okay, thank you very much. Erica, next speaker, please. Okay, next speaker of Hannah Bay. Hello, good morning, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Hi, my name is Hannah Bay. I'm the executive director of the San Diego County Farm Bureau. There's nearly 5,700 farms in the county of San Diego. Agriculture is our fifth largest contributor to our local economy. In San Diego County, we have the 19th largest farm economy in the nation. We're the 12th largest farm economy in the state. Our industry employs over 12,000 people and we're number one in part-time farmers. A significant portion of my San Diego County Farm Bureaus depend on the resource conservation districts being discussed today and the services that they've offered for the past decades. This ranges from dependence on my farmers for the irrigation work offered by Mission Resource Conservation District to the groundwater management provided by the Upper San Luis Rey Resource Conservation District to the Farm Bureau partnering with Greater San Diego Resource Conservation District to evaluate where farmland can be preserved in the future. First, I would like to thank King for his leadership during this very challenging time and his very open, uh, transparent communication. I appreciate LAFCO being thoughtful and not taking any drastic measures at this time. Our Farm Bureau members not only hold leadership positions in these resource conservation districts, but there are countless of my Farm Bureau members that have benefited from these services your RCDs offer. So I really encourage the commission today to ensure that whatever action you're taking, you are continuing to allow the existing RCDs to function under business as normal until whatever additional analysis needs to be conducted. We cannot afford to let these important services halt, um, especially when our agricultural industry is already struggling. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So, as far as you're concerned, it's working now, well now and it doesn't need any adjustment or evaluation? Uh, my concern is with whatever action you take, we don't want any services cut off to our farming community. And for each RCD, that looks a, a little different depending on which one you're talking about. But we need to make sure it sounds like this is the first municipal service review that has happened perhaps ever and it seems to have uncovered some significant issues. So please be very cognizant that if you stop a service, this will directly impact our agricultural community here in San Diego County. Okay, thank you. Excuse me, Erica? Yes. Do we have any more speakers? We do. Okay. Um, next speaker, I will call on Gary Arant. Thank you. Uh, 
Chair Vanderlyn and members of the commission, thank you very much. Uh, a group of water agencies, uh, the Water Authority and some of us in North County have submitted a couple of letters. And, and, and basically our message is very similar to what you just heard from Hannah Bay. And that is um, whatever LAFCO figures out with the three RCDs and, 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 and they are gonna do a um, thoughtful uh, deliberative process the services, uh, specifically from Mission Resource Conservation District, need to be sustained for whatever period of time that takes and uh, until <clears throat> another solution is found. The uh, irrigation efficiency evaluation that MRCD does has been very valuable in sustaining uh, North County agriculture, which has had challenges, uh, price of water, uh, other, other things, uh, making uh, efficiency in farming even more important than before. And Mission Resource uh, provides the services that helps our farmers be as efficient as possible. Uh, their services also provide a access or gateway to um, funding from the federal government through the NRCS programs. And, uh, and that's very valuable to our growers too. So um, as other speakers have said, uh, I'm sure LAFCO will figure it out. Uh, it may take a while, but in the meantime, the services that uh, the RCD, MRCD provides and also the role that the Upper San Luis Rey uh, RCD is playing in Sigma are really critical and be really careful of interrupting any of those processes because uh, farming is always uh, critical in terms of, of costs and weather and markets. And um, the Upper San Luis Rey um, or the Palma Valley uh, GSA is on a really tight time schedule to meet state law. And I agree that uh, uh, local control is much more important than uh, state control with the groundwater. But with respect to the water agencies, we really encourage that the services provided by the MRCD are sustained uh, during this study period. So I'd be glad to answer any questions. Thank you, Gary. So in your opinion, how is it working now? Well, from our perspective, uh, uh, the growers are very uh, appreciative of the uh, RCD and the fact that, that uh, those services are provided uh, through a contract with the uh, San Diego County Water Authority. Uh, that whole program got started back in the early 90s with the 91-92 drought, and it's been very important to sustain agriculture through dry, several dry periods and a rapid increase in wholesale costs. So as far as we're concerned, uh, the, pro the services provided by the MRCD are very effective and uh, very responsive to our growers' needs. What's your thought about a consolidation of the, M of the RCDs? Well, I mean, sometimes consolidation makes sense. Uh, it would seem that that's something that needs to be studied. It does seem that the three RCDs specialize in, in different areas. Uh, and so there might be a way to coordinate those services without a consolidation. Um, but that's something LAFCA will have to figure out. Consolidation sounds uh, like a solution, but it's sometimes it's very complex and uh, the end result may not be what you actually thought you were going to accomplish. What's your opinion of what's happening now with the with mission operating outside of their boundaries? I, I well, as a district manager um, who operates the water and wastewater system, I, I do agree that boundaries matter. But I've, I've kind of looked at mission resources services as more uh, educational and intellectual in terms of training and assistance uh, at a, on a technical level. And I'm not sure that those types of services necessarily need to be bounded by a boundary. Certainly pipelines and collection, collection lines and fire service response need to be identified, but this service is very valuable uh, beyond their boundary. And so I would hate to see it constrained uh, within their boundary unless there was a, another solution. Has there ever been any consideration of the water districts uh, taking over the RCDs? Uh, no, no, I don't think so, no. Okay. Yeah, we, we have a full plate, thank you. Too far outside the box. <laughs> okay, thanks, Gary. Erica? Yes, thank you, Gary. So that was Gary Arant from the Valley Center Municipal Water District. Um, next speaker, I will have Jack Beebe. Yeah, uh, thank you, uh, Chair. How are you? Yeah, I'm, can you guys hear me? 
Good morning, Jack. Good morning. Thank you, Chair and Commissioners, for uh, giving me the time to uh, uh, speak here. I, you know, I'll follow along a little bit with what Gary said. I think that the first most important thing to say is I support the MSR as written, right? So I think, you know, all these items that have come up for discussion have been carved out essentially as items that need to be looked at. So if we try to wait till we resolve those two items to finish this MSR, it'll be the only thing I think LAFCO will work on uh, this year. And I guess Linda will probably quit at some point. So I think these, these two items that have been carved out, the reason they've been carved out is they're, they're extremely complicated. Um, and you're gonna hear good arguments on, on both sides. And Keen has requested through the advisory committee, we do have a work group of, of three um, people, uh, myself, Kim Thorner, Paul Bushy, uh, general manager of Lucadia, and I'm the general manager of Fallbrook Public Utility District, um, working on uh, those two issues. Uh, one being Upper San Luis Rey, uh, and the other being uh, Mission Resources, Greater San Diego, the, the boundary question. Um, and really, you know, they're, they're a little bit more complex issue um, with, with Upper San Luis Rey on what's the role of activated powers, what is and isn't an activated power, what does the RCD Act mean, um, in terms of those activated powers, what's the precedence we're setting? So it's a complicated answer that I don't think, you know, that is appropriate for LAFCO to resolve within, you know, the next couple of weeks. It's going to take a little bit of time. Um, the other one, I, you know, I do have some concerns of where the, the mission resources, Greater San Diego, um, is going. And I have those from experience. So Consolidation maybe sounds good if both parties want to consolidate. Uh, many of you have been on the commission long enough to see what happens when both parties don't. And, and you end up essentially where uh, myself and Tom Kennedy are today, which is figuring out how to work together within the bounds of separate districts. So, you know, that, that one side being forward and the other maybe not um, tends to maybe not end up well. At least that's sort of you know, my experience, and, and I think the other concern about, you know, the, the, the boundaries and services in the boundaries, you know, Keen is committed to make sure that those services just don't end. I, I trust him in that. So I think that language, you know, as written is just something that means over time, we have to address this. And, you know, I'm a little hopeful we'll, we'll maybe be able to, you know, push Keen a little bit on the, the jurisdictional boundaries for, resource conservation districts, and then maybe those um, resource conservation districts can kind of come back together, you know, get past some of the personalities and, and come up with maybe an intermediate plan and maybe a long-term plan to consolidate makes sense. Um, maybe it doesn't, but I think that that also is going to take some time and it needs everyone to agree uh, really for it to be successful. And I don't think they're, they're there yet. So I uh, appreciate the, the time to express my concerns and comments. Thank you, Jack. You think there's enough common ground there to where this, these agencies could all come together? Uh, I, you know, I think so. I mean, what, what I've learned is, you know, everyone needs to trust each other and it, it really comes down to people a lot of times. So you, it tends to be individuals that maybe, uh, you know, cause some, some of the challenges. So I think, it, I think a slow approach is better um, and, and maybe to have an interim strategy of, you know, supporting each other's services and maybe working towards, you know, consolidating over time. Being in Fallbrook, you know, mission resource, being in Fallbrook in a water agency, mission resources really has a connection with the water agencies that frankly, greater San Diego doesn't at this point. So you're going to find some concern from the water agencies, you know, in, unless we're comfortable that these services are going to continue also, you know, up in North County, we wouldn't want to lose that representation. You know, we don't have a ton of services here in Fallbrook. Um, you know, the loss of that mission resources office would be a big deal to this community. So those are issues that will have to get fleshed out. And again, those are really beyond what we're dealing with today. Those are items that need to be flagged, you know, over the next, you know, several years to, to work themselves through. So do you think there's a way to work through the personalities to get to common good here? I hope so. And I, and I think maybe, you know, as part of our advisory committee um, under the special district advisory committee, we can help facilitate some of that and, and see if we can help bring uh, the resource conservation districts back together. That's kind of my hope is those, you know, like Gary said, they all have expertise. They're bringing federal funding into our communities. 
um, we, we don't want to inhibit that. We need to figure out how to really leverage that to maintain agriculture if we can. Okay, thank you, Jack. Thank you. Erica, next speaker. The next speaker is Jeremy Jungris. Okay. Good morning, Jeremy. Good morning, Jeremy. Good morning. I'm Jeremy Youngrice. I'm the general counsel for UEMA Municipal Water District, and I also am assisting the Palma Valley GSA in, in moving forward with developing a groundwater sustainability plan. So <clears throat> this is a critical issue for uh, the three members of the, of the GSA. And um, if I could just make a few points, I'd appreciate it. Um, first, I'd ask the commission to consider the letters that were submitted. They were submitted a little late, uh, not not late as far as the deadline, but um, we were largely responding to the uh, draft MSR that came out and that, that obviously raised some concerns when we saw item 7B, that was uh, not something we were expecting. And so when that came out, it, it prompted some folks. Um, and so I'd ask you particularly look at the letter submitted by the GSA with UEMA as lead, as well as Palma Valley Community Services District and the Upper San Luis Rey RCD uh, it contains a lot of information about the longstanding powers that have been exercised, the water management powers have been exercised by the RCD. Um, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about those. Um, so the request we'd have, I'll just state up front what we're looking, what, what I would recommend to the commission is one, is to approve the MSR with the active powers. I, but I would ask that um, UEMA in the letter they submitted last Friday did a, uh, we provided a lot more evidence that uh, there's powers that the Upper San Luis Rey RCD has exercised for 40 years continuously in concert through contracts with the National Resource Conservation Service and the state equivalent of same. And those have, have gone from the, you know, from well before LAFCA established uh, to 2019 when, when um, uh, the Upper San Luis Rey RCD entered into another M MOU with NRCS to do more of the same kinds of water conservation, flood control, and you know, large scale water management projects they've been doing for a very long time to benefit the agricultural and non-agricultural um, stakeholders up in the Palma Valley. And I'd also ask as another ask for the, uh, for the commission to consider is, is to potentially uh, stay out of the, um, and we're kind of already there, but it, it seems like it's it's probably not a direction that the commission needs to go if, if they don't choose to with the GA, GSA eligibility question. Um, that really is by the Sustainable Groundwater Management Act. That's charged to the, the State Water Resources Control Board and to a lesser extent, the California Department of Water Resources to make those kind of determinations. Um, if you recall, and I, I, was, I listened you know, to, to the excellent presentation by your executive officer at the beginning where he described the three purposes of the MSR and none of them were to determine you know, eligibility under external statutes as to whether someone could be a groundwater sustainability agency or not. That really, I don't know how it wound up within the purview of LAF or being considered by LAFCO, but it's really something that, that probably is, is better done by an agency that's charged with making decisions under Sigma. So I just, I'd ask you to consider that. So wh why is the issue being raised here? And I'll just, and, and, and this is, um, the, the issue of GSA eligibility has been raised by primarily um, uh, some particular stakeholders in the upper San Luis Rey, um, tribal interests, um, and, and what they've been trying to do. And in fact, the letter by Mr. Pellman specifically states it. They want the state to take over. They want the State Water Resources Control Board to come in and take over the basin, which is the, the first time in all of California there's ever been uh, a request made like that. Everyone, it, it's just it's kind of bizarre the idea that you, that local agencies would want the state to come in when you have a, a resource conservation district. And I might add that RCDs have been managing groundwater all over the state for uh, you know, for a few years now as part of the groundwater sustainability agencies that, that, have, that have been created throughout California. So um, the decision for LAFCO is is the one that's actually properly before LAFCO today, which is you know, what, what powers is active and latent powers as an RC exercise. Now I'll say this, um, the RCD, Upper San Luis Rey RCD, um, it's never been the subject of an MSR before. So arguably, and I think the better argument is that it has all, all of the powers by the RCD Act are currently active powers because 
no one has ever said otherwise. And when you go back and look at the comment letter we submitted, uh, it's pretty clear they've been doing a lot of stuff. I mean, a lot. And it's all related to water. All sorts of different projects. We have photographs of projects back from the 1990s, part of Alaska, where they were um, in helping uh, helping impound uh, floodwaters that were destroying agricultural property and channelizing them so they weren't causing damage and preventing water pollution, doing water pollution studies to improve water quality and, and conserve water so it wasn't wasted. Um, so in the comment letter, but I'll just say a couple things. The the act the, one of the issues is you know what powers is is the RCD. Uh, exercising. So they're doing conservation. So conservation, there's evidence that, they, that they're doing water efficiency work. They have, they're doing education on water efficiency, assisting farmers to be more efficient. That's, that's water efficiency. But the other kind of water conservation, which was the definition that's actually included in the RCD Act, deals with the prevention of waste of water. And that's where the, our, this RCD has been extremely active, preventing soiling and, and ruination of groundwater by excess pollution and preventing water from being lost to the watershed where it can't be beneficially used. And you'll see evidence, just extensive evidence over and over again of all the different projects and work that the RCD has done. Um, you know, if that's not water management, which is one of the key criteria under the Sustainable Groundwater Management Act to be a GSA, you have to do one of three things. You have to do water distribution, land use authority, or you have to have water management responsibilities. Those are the three things. And if you have one of those, you can choose to um, file a notice of intent with the state water, I'm sorry, with the California Department of Water Resources that you want to manage groundwater as a local agency, which is exactly what the Upper San Luis Rey RCD did in 2016. Well, no one had any problem with that in 2016. And indeed, some of the tribal interests were at the table and were perfectly okay with it. And, and you know, they were part of the initial MOU and, and it only the, these arguments that are now before LAFCO have only been raised since their disagreements have arisen with the tribes over their demand to have a mini adjudication inside of the groundwater sustainability process, which is outside the legal authority for the GSA to do. The GSA is supposed to develop a plan to manage groundwater sustainably. It has no authority to adjudicate water rights. So, you know, and, and I, I wanna say this, and this is important, um, the GSA has every intention to work with the tribes. The door is open. They can participate in a voting capacity and a non-voting capacity in any capacity they feel comfortable participating. We want them at the table. That has not changed. And so to the extent that they want to participate and help us develop a, a GSP, which meets the requirements of Sigma, the door is open and it's going to stay open. Um, just a couple more points. Um, uh, Chair, I, I apologize, Jeremy. I just, I just want to be fair. I know we've gone, uh, we've been lenient on the three minutes, but if you'd be kind enough to uh, just uh, sure, sure, come on. thank you. Thank I you. can do that, um, and I appreciate the indulgence of the chair. Um, the lawyers, we we sent a letter from Mr. Pellman. He he indicated that there needs to be water distribution powers. That's not what Sigma says. It says water management, and they've clearly done that. Um, and one last thing, there was something in the in, in exhibit. I'm sorry, agenda item seven B about uh, water rights, the tribes having 50% of the water rights in the river or in the groundwater basin. The water, Federal Reserve water rights only occur when a court is adjudicated. There's been no adjudication. So perhaps a court will do that someday and maybe that'll be the result. But for right now, there's been no water rights adjudicated in the San Luis Rey. And hopefully if we all work together, there won't be a need to be. And thank you all very much for listening to me. Thank you. One question. So you think with a higher level of Cooperation between the agencies, uh, we, there, nothing else would need to be done? I think if everyone's willing to come to the table, I think we can come up with an approach that gets us to be a compliant groundwater sustainability plan. And that there's, there's no question about it. And, and um, you know, it just, it, it requires everybody to be willing to work together. And, you know, I can say from the GSA side that that door is open. Thank you. Erica, is there any other presenters? Yes, we have three more registered speakers. Okay. The next, I will call on Tom Kennedy. Good morning, commissioners, chair. Uh, as you know, Hello. I'm the morning. I'm the general manager at Rainbow Municipal Water District. And on this topic, uh, again, like Jack, I support the staff's directions with the MSR. I think the, the two main areas for our agency, as you know, Rainbow is still primarily agricultural. Most of our water sales go to ag, and it's an important part of our community. Uh, they rely on the services that the MRCD 
uh, provides, the landscape efficiency and the irrigation efficiency services that are, that are well utilized. I think that as we look at the issue, as some had mentioned, stronger together or it would be great. Uh, but I think that where LAFCO should focus on boundaries, they also need to focus on service because it's all about efficient service provision. And so whatever happens, we don't want to pull the rug out from under our, our ag sector, which this commission and the County Board of Supervisors has uh, placed extra emphasis on uh, recently to make sure that we don't lose those services in the, in the, in the interim. With respect to the issues up in the upper San Luis Rey, I think a little bit of history uh, is important. Um, in the upper upper basin of the San Luis Rey uh, groundwater basin, uh, the majority of the land is under tribal uh, ownership. And we spent four years, I know Mr. Arant was involved, uh, myself and all the other stakeholders, including the county for some period of time, in trying to come together. And we did. We formed a GSA. We formed it and we started meeting. We were creating a groundwater sustainability plan and the whole thing hung up on what uh, uh, my friend Jeremy kind of inartfully described as a request by the bands to adjudicate the basin, which wasn't the case. But uh, there were certain interests over there who didn't want to uh, give the recognition to whatever tribal uh, rights were in a, in a manner that was acceptable to the rest of the parties. And so that, that GSA fell apart and now it's represented by only the three agencies. I personally would much rather see everybody come back together. It's, it's much better for these sorts of things to be res resolved in a boardroom rather than a courtroom. But as you know, waters for fighting and uh, that's what happens sometimes. And so I think that the, the review by LAFCO of the uh, latent or, or active powers by every, every agency that they supervise is an important function of LAFCO. Uh, I disagree with uh, Mr. Pellman in that I don't like to see the state come in and take over anything. I think it's better if everybody gets back together in a room, uh, that everyone fully respects everyone else's uh, rights under the law, both state and federal laws, and work it out because that's going to be the best solution overall. Thank you. Thank you very Chair, much, Tom. Chair, could I make one comment? I just want to ask one question. Go ahead, yes. Um, I've been here a little bit less than two years. I'm coming up on the two-year mark. And the more and more I talk to so many parties involved, there's nothing more intense than water rights. And um, <clears throat> I'm just wondering, uh, I see all the, the key points about having the GSA, uh, but something's not clicking that the Indian water, the Indian rights are not, not they don't feel like they're, they're being left out. So somehow that has to be dealt with or down the road, it'll end up in federal court as I understand it. So we've got to address the issue with the Indian Water Authority and their right and how they feel left out. Okay, thank you. Erica, next speaker, please. The next speaker is Steve Anderson. Uh, good morning, members of the commission. Uh, my name is Steve Anderson, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yes. Good morning, Steve. Good morning. Thank you very much. I'm a uh, attorney for the Palma Valley Community Services District, which is one of the member agencies of the Groundwater Sustainability uh, Agency in the Palma Valley. And I think I'd just like to, to share a few points. I think we share the view um, that was just expressed that we would like to have robust participation in our GSA process or our GSP development process by all the agencies and uh, interests that are involved. I mean, one important facet of Sigma to think about is that, and I think Mr. Young Rice expressed this, is that um, it's a state-driven process. And so under Sigma, there is no authority um, over what occurs on tribal property in terms of how much water they pump or choose not to pump. And so it's a, it's a complicated process because the G GSA itself doesn't have any authority over that, but at the same time, obviously the Indian water rights could be affected. And so it's, it's hard to figure out a, a mechanism to walk that tightrope. And I think locally we're doing the best I can, but, but we support the approach of keeping this issue at the local level. There have been uh, GSAs uh, formed with resource conservation district members across the state. The State Water Resources Control Board has endorsed that. 
And I think it's because the legislature had a firm recognition of what resource conservation districts do. They're involved in water management, water conservation activities throughout the state. I personally represent a number of them, including several that are part of these groundwater sustainability agencies in different parts of the state. And I think the legislature understood, as did the state water board, that RCDs, particularly in rural areas, are the representatives of farmers. They're the representative, representatives of growers, and they are the folks that are with their gloves on in the dirt doing water management projects on the ground. And so when it came time for the state board to consider and the legislature hey, who should we have eligible to conduct these and be participants in these groundwater sustainability agencies? They threw up their hands and said, well, yes, we're going to cast a broad net. And of course, we want those RCDs involved. And so I, I'm glad to hear from, from many of the representatives on the phone that we can all agree that keeping the issue, lo issue local is, is extremely important. And it's not only important because RCDs and the growers they represent are here and they want to be represented, but there, there's, there's a negative outcome that comes from Sacramento driving down and sort of taking over your process. And it's not merely that you have folks that may be less familiar with your community and what's going on, but frankly, it's the cost. The state board has already published what they're gonna charge folks if they, have to, if they have to take over a basin. And depending on how much work they have to do, they're gonna charge between 40 and 55 bucks an acre foot for every acre foot pumped out of the ground on an annual basis just to cover their overhead. And that doesn't include all the other costs that are gonna be absorbed by these farmers. And so there's a real concern uh, among the folks I speak with in the Valley that just getting through a process with, with, with Sacramento could put them in harm's way and maybe even bank bankrupt uh, some of these farmers with, with just the costs that, that simply aren't there if you go through it in another way. And I think that's why you see GSAs uh, being formed with RCDs across the state. And at, at bottom, the CSD uh, supports the recommendations made by Mr. Young Rice in, her, in his earlier uh, discussions. And I, and I think one of the major concerns on our point is, is at this point in time, we really need to be focused locally on the groundwater sustainability uh, itself, focused on the planning process. And the more attention gets diverted in terms of the resources of the staff and frankly, the lawyers getting involved, we're, we're, we're heading down the road of focusing on, on, on these other issues and not focused on groundwater management, which is where we're supposed to be focused our time, attention and money. And so I think that's one of the concerns on the CSD sides is let's let the process play out. Let's make sure everybody gets invited to the table and let's have a, a positive successful process that'll lead to a groundwater sustainability plan adoption and in, 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 in really only 11 months from now. It's due at the end of January of next year. So we don't have a whole lot of time. So we'd really like to move on with life and, and do the best we can in short order. So thanks very much. Thank you very much, Steve. Erica? Yes, our next speaker is Jeffrey Morris. Good morning. Uh, can you hear me? Yep, yes, we can. Yes, we can. Great, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Jeff Morris. Um, I, I'm counsel for Upper San Luis Rey RCD. And I, I certainly want to uh, thank the commission for your time this morning, um, as well as your attention to this uh, matter. I'll be very brief since uh, a lot of the, the comments already made um, by uh, the RCDs, uh, as well as uh, other stakeholders. Uh, have hit several of the points. Just a couple things. Um, first, uh, this issue that's before you today, the adoption of the MSR, uh, as your staff has already pointed out, is was an issue that was not anticipated. And Upper San Luis Rey RCD uh, is specifically objecting to the modification of the original draft report simply because this is a, a late edition item. There is no due process that was um, followed in terms of adding this issue as part of the MSR process. And this subject matter, uh, as was pointed out a moment ago, uh, uh, Upper San Luis Ray filed a notice of intent back in 2016 uh, with the state without any objection in terms of participating in the GSA process. And um, there, and counsel for 
uh, the tribal Indian of Water Authority has pointed out what their goal here is, and that is to have the state intercede, which will invariably, um, Upper San Luis Rey has uh, modest financial ability and resources in terms of uh, spending uh, legal dollars as opposed to um, important um, dollars going towards uh, the GSA and the sustainability plan. And uh, I would urge the commission to adopt the original draft uh, as constituted without the uh, addendum uh, that was uh, proposed simply because of uh, due process grounds. Um, and on, based on that, I, I would uh, conclude my comments. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Do you have anyone else uh, that has signed on, Erica, to speak? Um, that ends all of my registered speakers, but I do have two comments that need to be read into the record. Okay, will you do that for us then? Yes. So Thank this you. first one, I am going to try and keep within the three minute threshold. So I may not finish the reading, but it is available on our website under supplemental correspondence for both items 6A and 6B. Um, this comment is from Lloyd Pellman and I will start the reading now. So I am an attorney with Nosaman LLP and have 35 years experience with the statutes governing LAFCOs and their procedures. I'm assisting attorney Bob Pelsiger and submit these comments on behalf of the San Luis Rey Indian Water Authority. We agree with the statement of determinations for the final municipal service review and determinations 6I which is additional analysis is needed to determine Upper San Luis Rey RCD's legal standing under LAFCO statute to provide groundwater management and participate in a GSA. However, we disagree that a proper groundwater sustainability plan will be finalized ahead of the schedule under the Groundwater Sustainability Management Act as stated in agenda item 7B. As your staff currently, as your staff has accurately reported, the San Luis Rey Indian Water Authority objects to the inclusion of the Upper San Luis Rey R Resource Conservation District in a groundwater sustainability agency without first having received approval from LAFCO at a notice public hearing to activate its latent water distribution power. As your staff has accurately reported, the Upper San Luis Rey Resource Conservation District has not received approval from LAFCO at a notice public hearing to activate its latent power of water distribution. It does not matter that the district would have the power if it were to later gain approval from LAFCO when it lacked the power at the time of the purported formation of a GSA. It does not matter that uninformed or misinformed state water agencies relied on the provisions of the district's principal act instead of the active powers of this district. It does not matter that the resource conservation districts and other counties participate in groundwater sustainability agencies. It does not matter that the Indian Water Authority has been invited to attend the meetings of the purported GSA. What does matter is that LAF, is, excuse me, what does matter is that the Upper San Luis Resource Conservation District has not received approval from LAFCO at a notice public hearing to activate its latent power of water distribution. It continues to have only its activated powers of water conservation and wildlife enhancement. Those limited powers do not qualify the RCD to be a participant in a GSA and no provision of the Groundwater Sustainability Management Act either excuses the requirements of cortese nox Act or expressively, or expressly provides the authority of the State Water Control Board to itself determine what powers an entity has. So I believe that's the end of three minutes, just about. And again, the full comment is available on our website for correspond, supplemental correspondence for items 6A and 6B. And then I do have one more public comment for item 6A, and that, that is from Kimberly Thorner, and it reads, I would like to submit the following public comment on item 6A, as I am unfortunately not able to attend the meeting in person this morning. Um, good morning, commissioners. My name is Kimberly Thorner, chair of the LAFCO Special Districts Advisory Committee. 
I apologize that I'm un unable to attend the meeting this morning, but I wanted to state my support for the staff recommendation to process an addendum to the MSR and item 6A. To further evaluate the Upper San Luis Rey RCD's ability to, eligi to and eligibility to participate in a groundwater sustainable agency. This issue arose during the municipal service review process and is an important one that needs to have some additional time and a deep dive as it may be precedent setting. The Special District Advisory Committee established a subcommittee to evaluate this issue and we have asked for additional information and research to answer the questions of whether San Luis Rey's water conservation or other powers were active when it entered into the GSA and if they require LAFCO approval to activate necessary powers to participate in the GSA. The subcommittee plans on meeting in February with a, with a recommendation in March. If you approve the staff recommendation before you today. So thank you for the opportunity to comment. And that ends the public comments that I have for item 6A. Thank you, Erica. Eric, I'd like to get a copy of both of those. There, where are they on the website exactly? Sure. So the comment from Lloyd Pellman is under supplemental comments for item 6A and 7B. And then the Kimberly Thorner one is not posted just yet, but it should be posted shortly after this meeting. Okay. Thank you, Erica. Mm -hmm. Are there any other comments out there before we close the public hearing? Okay. Seeing them, we'll close the public hearing and Okay, board members, it's up to you now. I'm sorry that I let it run long in there. I thought we might be able to get some of the stuff out on the table that at least I was unfamiliar with and so we could figure out how we're gonna move on. So with that said, either commissioners or alternates, if you have any questions or wanna speak on the issue, now is the time to do that. What are uh, the addendum, uh, Keen? Um, so that has a, a bone of contention. So uh, if we do recommend the MSR, uh, would we be doing it possibly without the addendum? Uh, yes, you could. Well, of course that's not the staff recommendation. And, and Chair, if I, I, I heard two themes in the comments uh, uh, from the speakers that I, I think I can shortly address or, or address in, in short order that uh, provide some clarity. Uh, the first one was that there was this uh, discussion about uh, LAFCO not forgetting the importance about uh, existing service provision provided by any of the RCDs, irrespective of whether those services happen to fall outside uh, the jurisdictional boundaries. Certainly that was a, a comment and a theme of all the speakers from uh, Mission RCD. Uh, well, we hear you. Uh, and I'll, I'll add on behalf of the commission, uh, we're not oriented to take actions. Uh, it's not in our DNA to hurt the end users, whether they be the land, uh, landowners or uh, residents. Uh, that said, for the purposes of being very clear, um, these are governmental agencies, RCDs, uh, and their boundaries matter. Uh, and as such, the end goal, when LAFCO staff is saying to the commission that we want a purposeful pause and that we want to continue to work on this outside of the MSR over the next 60 months to the next MSR cycle. Uh, our ultimate goal uh, is to sync the two, sync the boundaries and the service areas, but the boundaries in our world uh, take precedence, right? And we're not saying that the services can't, uh, you know, be uh, uh, amended and or evolved to reflect those boundaries, but Boundaries matter. And then the second comment, and this goes to Commissioner Willis's question. Uh, yeah, there was a lot of pushback at this notion that LAFCO uh, would or, uh, or should proceed with an addendum in addressing the question of whether uh, the Upper San Luis Rey RCD uh, has the standing in statute. And guess what? Hey, uh, for better or for worse, uh, we are the uh, 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 holders and administrators of LAFCO law. Uh, but this question of whether uh, our, uh, Upper San Luis Rey has standing to be a member of the Palma Valley GSA. To be clear, um, Commission, the LAFCA staff recommendation to prepare an addendum uh, is not a signal nor a sign that we have reached any conclusion on the topic other than acknowledging that the San Luis Rey Indian Water Authority has raised uh, a good and pertinent question. Um, and it's clearly within our strike zone and we can have uh, commission council speak to that. 
Um, that said, whether the addendum produces a strike or a ball, well, that's up to the commission to decide. And we suggest it'd be better to take it uh, out of this <coughs> process to a future meeting. So that's our thoughts on the addendum. We still believe the addendum, addendum uh, uh, recommendation is important. Would ask the commission to keep that in your consideration. Oh. Okay, any other comments? Yes, uh, Mr. Chair and Supervisor Desmond. Yes. Wanna, okay, thanks. I have a few questions and then um, I, uh, I'm willing to make a motion. The, um, you know, as, as I agree with Keen, you know, there was a, a couple different issues here is that, you know, these services still need to be uh, provided. <clears throat> you know, the Farm Bureau spoke on, on that issue and, and uh, many of the uh, um, uh, districts, uh, the, uh, our, the resource conservation district said these are important um, issues they're dealing with and providing yet some of these are outside of boundaries. Uh, you know, so we're not really discussing should the services be, be provided or not. It's should these uh, resource conservation districts stay within their boundaries. So my first question is, my understanding is that we have the, the cease and desist letter that uh, was sent to the Mission Conservation District it is regarding one specific contract that Mission was providing outside of their bond boundaries. Is that correct, Keen? Uh, yes, so the cease and desist order uh, that Commissioner Desmond is referencing is specific to mission and specific to outside services provided through a grant by SANDAG involving a rondo control. That is the only uh, applicable uh, service noted in that order. And, and, and I'm assuming, I guess, that other services that Mission is providing outside of their boundaries, are those also going to be evaluated by LAFCO? Yes. And it would be part of a deeper dive as part of our purposeful pause. Uh, and it's to true up Mission, as well as the other two uh, RCDs, but to true up Mission services that fall outside their boundary. Okay, then uh, on the um, uh, upper uh, San Luis Rey, What's the timeline for LAFCO to evaluate that, the Upper San Luis Rey's uh, eligibility to provide groundwater management? Because I guess that's the question. So what kind of, did you say that was going to be 18 months until the next MSR or what, what no. when might that be done? Yeah, so the addendum, we will start, if you uh, approve the recommendation, uh, Linda will start working on that ASAP and uh, we could bring that back. Uh, the goal would be within 30 to 60 days, whether it gets continued a separate topic, but we would prioritize that. So today, by, if we accept your recommendations, there is no specific action that's going to be um, going to stop somebody from providing services. It's just that we're going to be evaluating, except for the cease and desist that did go out. We're going to be eval evaluating the boundaries, also evaluating the San Luis Rey's eligibility uh, accepting the report and then allowing these different resource agency uh, conservation districts to work together to figure out how they want to proceed, hopefully within their own boundaries and to kind of work these things out. So I'm going to make a recommendation to accept um, the staff's recommendation uh, to, um, you know, accept the report and to continue working with the diff different conservation districts so that they can maybe come up with their own MOAs or MOUs with each other, decide if somebody's gonna work outside of their boundaries or not. I, I think we have to respect boundaries, but I think that what we're doing today is accepting the report and then allowing you to come do a deeper dive and more research into uh, the issues being brought forward here today, not really an action item, except for the cease and desist that was already uh, given out. So I'll make that motion. Is there a second for that? I'll second, Mr. Second. Chair. Thank you. Is that, is, is that with the amendment then? Yes. Does everyone understand that? Motion in a second. Can we approve the report including the addendum? Is that correct? Well, again, I, I want to clarify again on the amendment, uh, Keen. So that's not saying that they don't have the authority to do it. We're just, it's a question of whether they, we have to, when maybe we need to see if they really authorize them. Is that part of the issue? Correct, and it's an addendum, and it's to uh, come back at a future meeting, the sooner the better, uh, for the commission to uh, address 
the eligibility question of RCD, San Luis Rey RCD with respect to being in a GSA. And that's coming back in 30 to 60 days. The, we will certainly give, if, if it doesn't come back, we'll explain why it's not coming back, but one way or the other, it will be on your future agenda uh, in March, uh, either as an action or an update. So yes, we will prioritize. So we're not giving you authorization to make that determination right now. You're, we're authorizing you to do more research and then that bring it back to us to, uh, to vote up or down on, on the determination. Correct. The commission ultimately is responsible for making that determination. And what happens to the cease and desist order? Uh, the cease and desist order apl still applies. Uh, and again, it's, it was specific to a relatively limited function of Mission RCD providing Arundo control uh, within the jurisdictional boundary of Greater San Diego through a SANDAG uh, grant. That is the only thing that uh, your staff has uh, weighed in on. How is that enforceable or is it? Uh, it's enforceable by the way of LAFCO law and if need be, and I don't believe this is to the case, if uh, that service was restarted, I'm sure Holly would have some suggestions on how to uh, 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 better enforce it. Okay, I don't think Holly's on now, is she? She is. She is. Holly, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Do you have a comment on that? Enforceability of that cease and desist? Uh, well, certainly, um, if we needed to enforce that uh, beyond uh, just the letter that we sent out, um, we, we could proceed with a legal action. Um, of course, our hope is that that would not be necessary and we could preserve the resources of both agencies uh, to get compliance um, just with the letter that's gone out. Okay, thank you. Are any, any other comments on where we are right now? It was a shaking of a head when we were talking about contracts that that the Mission Resource District had. Is that an issue, or did I just make that up? Okay, doesn't was there a comment on that or not? Yes, go ahead. Um, we have also, as part of this, we've asked them to stop all activities within our boundaries. So it's it's not just the Arundel removal that was problematic. It's um, other projects as well. So that's part of the cease and desist order then? Uh, Chair, if I can add, uh, uh, if you want to reopen the public hearing, uh, you probably would uh, need to do that. Okay, I'm um, sorry, I talked out of tune there, right? Well, <laughs> you have discretion here. I'm just uh, watching the, 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 the process. So I do know <laughs> that uh, uh, other issues, staff is certainly uh, ready to address offline with the affected agencies. Um, so uh, again, uh, I think you have a motion in a second. So that, as it as it stands right now, it's just that one uh, activity that's being that has a cease and desist. Okay. Correct. Thank you for bringing me back down to earth here. Okay. Uh, roll call vote, please, Erica. Okay. Okay. Uh, so roll call for item six A. Um, Commissioner Wells? Yes. Commissioner Vargas? Yes. Commissioner Salas? Yes. Thank you. Commissioner, yes. Commissioner Kate? Yes. Commissioner McKenzie? Yeah. Commissioner Desmond? Yes. Commissioner Vanderlyn? Yes. Commissioner Willis? Yes, with some reservations, but yes. Okay. So eight in favor with zero opposed, the motion passes. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, thank you for your endurance on this issue here. I'm just getting my legs in, in place here being the chairperson. So sorry if I went over too long on that. Uh, I would like to have a, at least establish an ad hoc committee from the commission to uh, be in place in case we want to activate it uh, to work with our advisory committee. There's a lot of committees working here, but as you can tell by all the discussion that we've had and the, the uh, intensity of the staff report itself, plus the comments that we received, this is a pretty complicated issue and one that has uh, some certainly some 
potential volatility here, sensitivity if nothing else. So uh, with that, I'd like to, I have a committee of three, I'll, I'll pick them myself. It would be uh, myself uh, and uh, Jim Desmond and the other person, I'm losing the name right now from, uh, what's the, one of the new members? Uh, uh, the uh, alternate for the city of San Diego, uh, Marnie Von Wilpert. Uh, and, and Marnie, so there would be those three. I mean, we need to check in with the uh, advisory committee and see where they are and see if they'd like some help there. Otherwise, we don't want to step on their toes and have too many hands in the pie. But just, I'm hoping that has been stated, especially by the last speaker, Steve, I think, or somewhere in there that we could come together and make this thing work. It's unfortunate that it's all coming down at one time when we opened up one door, there seemed to be several others that were behind there that we didn't know about. So while well, we have an opportunity and it's on the table, I think we should take every opportunity that we can to make this the best that it can be and certainly try to maintain some local control here. So thank you again for your endurance and, and for your time. I, I do have a question if we have time. What, yeah, what go we? ahead. Okay, uh, Keen, is there any precedent so that when their uh, uh, jobs are done outside of the sphere of influence, where it could be in a be done in a joint op of a joint operation for two districts. Uh, absolutely, Commissioner Willis. So the law allows agencies to enter into memorandum of understanding with one another, uh, and generally speaking, those kind of arrangements don't have to go to LAFCO. Uh, in this particular case, uh, the RCDs. Um, had a mission in Greater San Diego had a MOU, but that MOU was canceled uh, by uh, Greater San Diego. So that right now does not apply. Okay. But there is the possibility of addressing this with a joint effort. Sure. For both uh, agencies. Uh, I always get back to the idea of win, win, win for everybody. So I, I hope that we can get to that point where everybody, maybe not, not everybody gets everything they want but that they're, everybody feels like they got a piece of the process, a piece of the action, so to speak. Now, those are my thoughts on the matter. Thank you. Okay, the next item is... Uh, six. Mayor, if I could just ask for clarification. So on the ad hoc committee, as I understood it, uh, with commissioners uh, Desmond uh, Von Wilpert and yourself, Chair, the goal would be to call the ad hoc uh, to uh, convene a meeting uh, if and when uh, or I should say, when uh, staff proceeds with uh, addressing uh, the systematic issues uh, relating to service and boundaries, as well as uh, the uh, issue with uh, greater, or, uh, a lot of RCDs here, uh, San Luis Rey uh, RCD, um, use it as a, as a soundboard and a, and a checkboard, but not necessarily, um, there's also a possibility, I suppose, that uh, um, it would be also done offline and we could do email communications as well. Yes, I okay. thank you for that clarification. Also, one of the other things is that we have a, a hardworking uh, advisory committee that we only hear from. We, we haven't inter interacted with them. So I think it would be important to at least touch base with them um, by the telecommute kind of a thing and uh, be guided by to see if they need help and if so, what kind. But I'm thinking that if we could get the affected parties together uh, with an open atmosphere, we may be able to accomplish a lot here. That was Kimberly Thurner that commented earlier from the advisory committee, right? Yes, of course. She's the chair, I guess. Okay. All right, then are we clear to go to 6B then? <laughs> yes. Okay. We take that one, Keen. I understand we have a staff report. We also have two registered speakers. Yes. Uh, so 6B is now uh, taking what we have all learned. Uh, through the MSR process on resource conservation districts and now following up with your duty under statute uh, commission uh, to, up, uh, to update their spheres of influence. And for all the reasons, okay, that is in your gen report and for all the reasons we've talked about uh, just now as part of the MSR process, uh, your staff is recommending that you go forward today as part of this public hearing, uh, update uh, all three agency spheres, Mission, Greater San Diego and Upper San Luis Rey update the spheres with no changes, right? So that would satisfy 
your requirement under statute and you'd be providing uh, LAFCO staff a nice steady baseline of the existing conditions to work off of while we uh, address uh, the, uh, uh, the items we just went into some great detail uh, on. So again, the recommendation is to update uh, all three uh, spheres of influence with no changes. Uh, we do have two speakers for this item, Chair, and this is a public hearing. Thank you. Okay, so there are any other initial comments from the board, the commission? If not, I'll open the, the uh, public hearing. And so Erica, the speakers, please. For this first speaker, I will call on Cheryl Landrum. Cheryl, are you still here with us? <laughs> I don't see Cheryl right now. Okay, so we'll come back. So Gary Arant. Did we wear them all out? <laughs> uh, this is Gary Arant, thank you. Okay, uh, nice I, to see you back. I, I have no additional comments. Uh, just to re-emphasize how important it is to sustain these critical services over the next period of study period. And I, after some comments I just heard, I'm, I'm concerned. But we'll monitor it and hopefully uh, we can all work this out. Thank you. Okay, Gary, thank you. We wanna make sure that your comments are heard by staff as we work on this thing a little further. Thanks for being here. Okay, uh, so we'll close the public hearing then and motion would be in order. Chair, would, would Cheryl Lander, would you like to speak to item 6B? Oh, I'm sorry, excuse me. Um, just to say that we are more than happy to work with all the providers in our areas that are currently being assisted by Mission RCD. And we will reach out to the water districts and, um, you know, customer service is our main priority. And like I said, we have a very capable staff and we don't want anyone to suffer from a lack of attention, so to speak, in these services. So we are more than willing and happy and to reach out and to get the job done for you. Okay, thank you. We need some negotiators behind the scenes, otherwise we won't make any progress. So I appreciate you volunteering. And did you have a comment? I'm sorry, I, I need to the re recommendation restated, please, uh, Keen, or from somebody. Yes, the, the staff recommendation is to uh, adopt the draft resolution in your packet, which would update with no changes, all three existing spheres of influence for Mission RCD, uh, Greater San Diego RCD and Upper San Luis Rey RCD. Okay. Thank you. Are there any other comments then? Did we get a motion or not? We didn't, did we? We need a motion and a second. I'll make a motion, Retro Willis, Commissioner Willis. Is there a second? I'll second the motion. This is Joe. Okay. Thank you, Joe. Okay, roll call, please. Okay, roll call for item 6B, Commissioner Vanderlyn? Yes. Commissioner McKenzie? Yes. Commissioner Salas? Yes. Commissioner Kate? Yes. Commissioner Desmond? Yes. Commissioner Willis? Uh, yeah, aye, yes. Commissioner Vargas? Yes. Commissioner Wells? Yes. Okay, eight in favor with zero opposed, the motion passes. <clears throat> thank you. Item 6C, Keen. Uh, thank you. So uh, this item is an informational report on Sigma. And uh, I, I assure you, there, this was just happenstance timing. But nevertheless, I'm going to hand this over uh, to uh, uh, Priscilla Allen for the presentation. Priscilla, the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, so good morning. My name is Priscilla Allen, analyst with San Diego LAFCO. Thank you for having me today. Um, do, if we please put up the presentation for me. What, I'm sorry, what page are we on? I've lost my place here. What page? 233. What is it? 233. 233? Okay, thank you. There's 233. Just in presentation mode for me. Thank you so much. 
So to begin, the item I'm presenting today is for discussion and feedback and involves an informational report on Sigma as part of LAFCO's work plan. So our goal with this informational report is to broaden our awareness in fulfilling LAFCO's regulatory and planning functions with regard to Sigma. Most importantly today, we want commissioner input on how best to sync Sigma and LAFCO activities moving forward. So to provide you all with some background and context, um, so what is Sigma? Sigma was a game changer for groundwater users. And as we've already heard from others, it was signed into law on September 16th, 2014 by Governor Jerry Brown. And this marked a response to depleting groundwater resources throughout California due to A, long periods of drought, and B, pumping groundwater at levels that far exceeded the basin's natural replenishments. Sigma was enacted to guide the management of groundwater basins over a 20 year horizon with two principles in mind. One, to better manage our groundwater supplies for long-term reliability and multiple economic, social, and environmental benefits. And two, that groundwater management is best achieved locally. Oh yeah, the PowerPoint slide. Oh. Yeah. So um, thank you, Do So looking at Sigma at the state level, they gave key implementing directives. Um, they stated that it would be a coordinated effort through public engagement, local agencies um, developing the plan and implementing it. And then the Department of Water Resources playing the role of overseeing the effort um, through plan evaluation, assessments, technical and financial support. So first, groundwater basins are designated by the Department of Water Resources as either high, medium, low, or very low priority. Critically overdrafted basins are high priority basins that are experiencing continued depletion in water levels and with current practices could lead to adverse impacts, either economic, social, or environmental. And so local agencies within a groundwater basin are tasked with forming groundwater sustainability agency or GSA and must be comprised of one or more local public agencies that have water supply, water management or land use responsibilities in the affected basins. They must individually or together cover the entire basin. Initial deadlines to form a GSA was in June of 2017 and any basins that are subsequently identified to be a priority would have two years thereafter to establish a GSA. The agencies are responsible for stakeholder outreach and the development and implementation of a groundwater sustainability plan, also known as a GSP. And a GSP is essentially a roadmap for how the GSA plans on achieving long-term sustainability for the groundwater basin. And these are updated every five years. The implementation of a GSP authorizes several powers, including um, the GSA's ability to adopt rules and regulations, establish ordinances by resolution, acquire inappropriate water rights and conduct investigations, require groundwater metering, regulate groundwater extraction, establish and collect fees, and also conduct enforcement. The basin's designation would determine the deadline in submitting a GSP, so for those critically overdrafted basins, that was in January of 2020, um, deadline to submit G for, sorry, the deadline to submit a GSP for high and medium priority basins is this upcoming January 2022. Basins subsequently identified as critically overdrafted, high or medium priorities have five years thereafter to manage a basin under a GSP. Again, there are alternatives to a GSP and those would be agreements that would be made through JPAs, MOUs, or other legal agreements. However, the important part that if, is if that deadline is not met, um, that may lead to state intervention if it's not resolved. So looking at Sigma at the local level, um, do if you could move on to the next slide for me. Um, so looking at this map, you'll see all the basins located in San Diego County. And of all these basins, there are three currently subject to Sigma. 
Um, and those are identified there as Borrego Springs Subbasin, San Pasqual Valley Basin, and the Upper San Luis Rey Subbasin. And I'm gonna give you a quick overview of each. Next slide, please. Thank you. Um, so we have the beginning with the Borrego Springs Subbasin. This is a basin that's designated as critically overdrafted high priority basin. It lies in Northeast San Diego County. The surrounding area has a mix of land uses with an estimated population of 3,500. It is part of a larger basin, Borrego Valley, that extends east into Western Imperial County. A GSA was initially formed in 2016 that included the Borrego Water District and the County of San Diego. However, currently stakeholders within the area are awaiting approval uh, by the Orange County Superior Court on an alternative uh, legal agreement. If this agreement is approved, governance over the subbasin would then transition over to a five member water master board, uh, which would appropriate groundwater rights and allowances instead of having a GSA. Moving on to the San Pasqual Valley Basin. This is a medium priority basin, which lies in central San Diego County. It is mostly rural residential with an estimated population of 110. In June of 2017, the County of San Diego and City of San Diego formed the San Pasqual Valley GSA. Work on the GSP is now underway with a draft expected for public review in April or May of 2021. And now moving on to Upper San Luis Rey Valley Subbasin. This is a medium priority basin that lies in North Central San Diego County. It is mostly agriculture and agriculture and re rural residential with an estimated population of 4,200. Um, currently, as we've heard, the Uima Municipal Water District, Palma Valley Community Services District and the Upper San Luis Rey Resource Conservation District formed the GSA and this was in 2019. Um, again, a dispute is currently underway as we've heard with the San Luis Rey when, uh, water, uh, Indian Water Authority's objection to Upper San Luis Rey's RCD's inclusion in the GSA without having first received approval from LAFCO to activate its water conservation and distribution powers. Nonetheless, work on the GSP is now underway with a draft expected to be ready for public review in November of 2021. So now that we have a little bit of an understanding of each of the basins here um, subject to Sigma within San Diego County, um, the relationship between Sigma, Sigma implementation and LAFCO right now is um, indirectly important. So current statute states that any local public agency with land use, uh, water distribution, or water supply may become a GSA. And so it doesn't provide a direct relationship between Sigma implementation and LAFCO with regards to formation. However, an indirect direct relationship exists and has been exercised in other counties. And those include um, formations between for special districts in step with facilitating a GSA annexations for GSA members, whether it's cities or special districts, in order to capture the entire basin, again, a requirement of Sigma, and latent power activations for special districts, again, to av avoid disputes um, as we discussed earlier in 6A. Um, so moving forward, we have some thoughts on how to better facilitate the relationship building process in San Diego County going forward. Do if you could move on to the next slide for me. Thank you. So one, we want to establish groundwater management as a standalone special district municipal function in class. Two, document groundwater management activities and or opportunities in MSRs as appropriate going forward. We would like to request interested party status with all existing GSAs, including the County of San Diego um, and in doing so, ensure the opportunity and statute to participate and comment on GSA activities. Four, expand the LAFCO website to include information on groundwater basins and GSA programs in San Diego County. So to end, um, Sigma represents a significant policy change for the state of California and for all of us. And so we hope that broadening our awareness helps guide our actions going forward. 
And with that, I'd like to include, conclude my presentation. I'd be happy to answer any questions or address any comments. Thank you so much for your attention during my presentation. And I do believe we have a few uh, registered speakers. Thank you, Priscilla. Thank you. Right. Any comments uh, or questions by the, by the board? No, we're gonna, we're gonna, then we're going to get to what the recommendation is that hasn't been said yet, right? Do you have uh, a? No, uh, there's no recommendations. This is an informational okay. item uh, and okay. thoughts going forward. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I'll open the public hearing. We have we have two speakers. You said Erica. Um, for item seven B, I have three speakers. Three. Okay. Sure. So the first, I will call on Tom Kennedy. Good morning again, commissioners. Um, I think that uh, uh, in addition to the comments I made before, I think that the uh, question on uh, whether LAFCO should be involved in the groundwater issues and the applicability of latent or active powers of various agencies under their, their uh, purview is important. I know that you heard some speakers from uh, the Upper San Luis Area RCD talking about some of the provisions of water management services they've provided and whether or not that qualifies as being applicable under Sigma, it would be the pertinent question. Uh, and I think that within your LAFCO staff, you have plenty of capable folks who can uh, help uh, guide you to that decision. So thank you. Okay, thank you, Tom. Next speaker, please, Erica. Next speaker, I have Gary Arant. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, I, th I thought that was a, a really um, good overview of Sigma having been involved in it uh, in the early stages of it, the legislative uh, formation and then uh, having worked on the Sigma formation in the Upper San Luis Rey since 2015. I would say that, that LAFCO is a little late to the party uh, as the, uh, this, on, this has been ongoing for a number of years. And as I said in my earlier comments, the, the timing on this is critical. Uh, uh, this has to, the Upper San Luis Rey uh, area has to be completed uh, by the end of this year and adopted by uh, EWR uh, by January. So it's very critical timing and um, hopefully we don't slow that down. Okay, thank you. Erica, next speaker. The next speaker, I have Jeremy Ungries. Yes, thank you, um, honorable commissioners. Just a couple other thoughts about the System of Groundwater Management Act. For those of you who didn't, who didn't have the uh, pleasure of taking part in the formation of GSAs, it was a bare knuckle affair. <laughs> and throughout California, it was the same. And um, I, just, I just wonder if LAFCO isn't opening a bit of a Pandora's box by jumping in, uh, as, as Mr. Arant stated, pretty late in the game and, and getting into the issue of, of who should be GSA eligible and who is not. That would be unique in California. There have been hundreds of groundwater sustainability agencies that have been formed and none of them have gone through a LAFCO process. None of them have, it, and it had the legislature intended that, the legislature could have said, you can file a notice of intent to become a GSA after you've had LAFCO approve your groundwater management powers. The problem is RCDs are really no different than any other uh, agencies in California, local agencies who operate under broad uh, statutes, many of which were passed in the 30s and 40s and before that, where there's all sorts of different powers. And, you know, none of those so municipal water districts, counties, believe it or not, 10 years ago, eight years ago, the county of Tahoma case, there was an issue as to whether counties could even manage groundwater. And they're kind of the principal local agency. Um, to this, I, it was people were surprised, like, well, gosh, of course, counties could do that. But so to, to go here and say, well, everyone has to go through LAFCO first, you'd have, and, and meanwhile, as, as Mr. Arant stated, you know, the deadline is coming up to have these GSP completed. You could unwind an entire statute for groundwater management throughout the state. It could be literally catastrophic for people who are trying to do the right thing and sustainably manage groundwater. So I, I, I'm encouraged by the prior discussion about you know, getting the parties together, maybe there's a solution. I will say that uh, you know, in the San Luis Rey, uh, we asked DWR to perhaps provide facilitation services. They offered it, and the Indian Water Authority said they weren't interested. And so we are interested. We want to have that discussion. So there's a solution. We want to be part of it. But you know, what, what LAFCO is doing here, and I understand the, the desire to create certainty, but it is a very difficult uh, situation to be unique and precedent setting 
to be getting in at this time and, and saying who's allowed to be a GSA and who's not. It could be, because you wouldn't just do the RCDs, you'd have to do everybody. You'd have to do municipal water districts, irrigation districts, counties, cities, everybody. Because the RCD Act is really no different than any other local agency powers. So with that, um, thank you for your time and allowing me to speak again. Thank you. Are there any other comments on this item? Okay, here, here. I'm sorry, go ahead. Excuse me, Jim. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I didn't know if you were done with public comments or not. Um, I was just I, finalizing that and then I'll open the public hearing. So no more public comments. Okay, we'll open the public hearing then. Jim, go ahead. Well, you know, I, I would like to say we, we doing this, we need to proceed with caution because since Borrego and the San Luis Rey um, watersheds are both within my, my district, I got a, you know, very quick uh, um, um, learning curve in dealing with the GSAs that the Borrego uh, Valley uh, uh, area, their GSA, I mean, it was comprised of pumpers, it was comprised of the water district, it was comprised of, of uh, recreational opportunities, regular citizens, and the county. And so um, it was pretty unique, and, but I wouldn't recommend that same makeup in other uh, groundwater or sigma uh, areas as well, though. I think it's, it, they're pretty unique. So we have to kind of, if we're going to form some sort of criteria for membership, we got to be cautious of the local local areas. And, and uh, as one of the speakers that already, uh, Jeremy, I think brought up, it's like, you know, the, and so did Mr. Arant is, you know, the horse is out of the gate here on some of these. And um, and I know there's some d disagreements, you know, we're hearing with the, uh, um, I guess the tribal disagreements with the San Luis Rey uh, watershed. Um, but I, I get, I just want to, I guess I'm okay with potentially looking at this, but not necessarily um, approving it at this point in time, just because of the uniqueness and, and you know, waters for fighting. And unfortunately, uh, if we get in the middle of that, you know, and, and somebody's left out because of our actions or our decisions, it, it might be detrimental to that uh, community. So um, I, I'm just saying, you know, okay, go ahead, take a look, but we, we got to really proceed with caution here because this is, this is something I don't know if we really um, uh, want to get into this fight or not. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Any other comments? Keen, do you want to wait? Oh, I'm sorry, excuse me, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I want to echo the comments by Supervisor Desmond as well to our understanding that um, at least for the city of San Diego's and the GSA that we formed with San Luis Rey, there are already a lot of um, cooks in the kitchen, I guess. And there's a, um, a lot of work that has been done and it continues to be done that is, um, I guess, controversial for lack of a better term. Um, it's been very difficult. And so, um, I would agree that we would need to proceed with caution. I would also want to uh, hear feedback, at least from, from ours, uh, from from city staff, um, county staff, um, other interested parties, those who are involved, and, and um, get their feedback on how it's how it has gone thus far. Um, and uh, again, just echoing the comments by Supervisor Desmond, this may it's something that we just um, don't want to get involved in and already. Um, uh, uh, ruffle uh, additional feathers that have uh, already been ruffled based on the experience thus far. Okay, thank you. Keen, do you have any comment on that? Uh, I do. Uh, and I'll <laughs> go back to uh, 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 the comments made by uh, Mr. Rant and, uh, uh, and Jeremy. Just to be clear, Commission, lack of staff is not articulating a new and or unique role for the commission with respect to stigma. We are articulating roles that exist by way of the legislature, roles uh, identified by the legislature. So uh, with respect to what our thoughts are on going forward, certainly that's at the discretion of the commission. So uh, Priscilla uh, outlined, I thought some very reasonable approaches that first and foremost, we contemplate now ground, groundwater management as a municipal service, right? Up until today, uh, for the 50 years LAFCO has operated, we haven't focused in on groundwater uh, management being a public municipal service, but Sigma makes it a, a municipal service. So it makes sense to sync our, our policies. Um, addressing it uh, as we do the MSRs makes sense because uh, 
um, there is a fourth concrete purpose. So Jeremy correctly called me out. I, I listed three purposes of MSRs in the beginning of our discussion today uh, to inform spheres, to inform boundary changes and to use it as a tool to initiate governmental uh, changes. The fourth one actually came about in 2008 and we are to document and categorize special district uh, service functions and classes. And anything that's not identified in the MSR as an active service function uh, then becomes latent and then needs to come to LAFCO for approval. There is the rub uh, that gets us back to the RCD question. And we're not presupposing an answer. We're just simply the question has been asked. Uh, so uh, I am sensitive to the commission's interests uh, to help and not uh, uh, her uh, existing processes. So we're certainly uh, going to follow that path, um, but the role has been, the, uh, has been established by the legislature, not, not us on, on what our powers are. Okay, does that clear it up a little bit? Yes. Any further questions or comments? Hearing or seeing none, a motion would be in order. Actually, uh, no motion here, Chair. This was, this okay. was purely uh, informational. Um, uh, and so uh, okay. going uh, forward, I, I misspoke. I jumped Robert 6C. So I'm gonna ask Robert before we get an applicant to uh, send a mean letter to Robert, if you could handle uh, item 6C uh, uh, for us. And I apologize, Chair, that was, that was my error. Okay, well, I made enough, so don't worry about it. Uh, let's go back to 6C then. Did you want to introduce that, Keen, or do you want me to just go? I'm done. Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> good morning, Mr. Chair, Commission members. Thanks for still uh, being here, Robert. <laughs> oh, it, it's all good. I, I figure we come back at some point. Um, this is item uh, 6C on your agenda. This requires a public hearing. Um, this item, uh, this agenda item involves a proposed wastewater service agreement between the city of La Mesa and an interested landowner. Um, under state law, uh, cities and districts are not allowed to provide their services outside of their jurisdictional boundaries without first getting LAFCO approval uh, and then are qualified within certain circumstances. Um, within uh, their sphere of influence, a city and district can extend services by agreement in anticipation of a, a future jurisdictional change to annex uh, that property. Uh, outside of this sphere requires a health and safety emergency for a city or district to extend services uh, beyond their sphere and jurisdictional boundary. So for this circumstance, we have an interested property owner on a developed parcel in the unincorporated area outside of La Mesa, <clears throat> excuse me, in the Valle de Oro unincorporated community. Uh, this uh, property is a, just under an acre. It's developed with one single family home. It's on a septic system. Uh, the septic system has been documented by the County and Department of Environmental Health as being substandard for current regulations uh, for the existing home. However, it is functional at this time. Um, under the county's uh, uh, accessory dwelling unit ordinance, um, properties within residential zones are allowed to develop an, uh, one accessory dwelling unit based on you know, certain parameters within the ordinance. So in this case, the, the landowner desires to build an accessory dwelling unit, an ADU uh, on the property. However, that would impact the septic system. Uh, and so the landowner is requesting this extension of service from the city of La Mesa to be able to facilitate the accessory dwelling unit construction, but also to uh, rectify the substandard septic system that currently exists. Now, because this, this property is not contiguous with the city and it is not inside the city sphere, it's not immediately eligible to annex. However, it's in a pocket of unincorporated territory that's surrounded by La Mesa. Uh, La Mesa sewer service is available within the frontage and Grossmont Boulevard um, and the city is willing to extend services by contract uh, and has provided a draft contract to stipulate the terms and conditions. Part of the terms and conditions involve uh, the landowner's consent as a condition of service uh, for a future annexation, uh, that they would not oppose that action were it to be uh, uh, initiated by the city in the future. At this point, an annexation of this property would be an illogical boundary uh, in the sense of its lack of contiguity and its surrounding uh, by unincorporated property and the city. So what's required here for the commission to facilitate the contractual agreement for sewer is to actually add this property to the city's sphere of influence, uh, which again would be under the terms of the contract 
in anticipation of a future jurisdictional change. That conforming sphere of influence is what requires this uh, public hearing and also uh, requires LAFCO to make written determinations. So we have uh, provided those in the agenda packet. Uh, we've not received uh, uh, any opposition for this proposal. Um, annexation would occur at some point in the future um, and uh, uh, general planning and zoning, et cetera, would be established by the city as part of that uh, proposed annexation for it uh, were it to happen in the future. Uh, what this would do would basically allow this uh, landowner to continue occupying the current single family residence and develop one ADU on the property uh, and also rectify the substandard uh, existing septic system before it becomes a problem. So the staff recommendation is to approve the sphere amendment to include the property as well as the frontage portion of Grossmont Boulevard uh, and to approve the proposed contractual wastewater agreement between the city and the landowner. Um, I'd be happy to answer any additional questions, uh, but I wanna keep this one brief for you. Thank you, Robert. Uh, Robert. Thank you. Robert, you said there was no opposition. You said there's we no know, opposition, Robert. That's correct. We've notified the community planning group in the area. Uh, there, there are provisions for this type of situation with a health and safety emergency. This is somewhat of a gray area between an actual health and safety emergency uh, and a need for service. Uh, so this is why we are asking for the Spear Amendment to facilitate this uh, before it becomes a public health and safety issue. Okay, any other questions by the commission? Okay, we'll I make a motion. We, I make a motion we go. Let me open the public first. hearing first. Oh, sorry. sorry. We'll open the public hearing. And uh, any commissioners want to comment on this or questions? And the motion would be in order, Barry. I make a motion that we do uh, uh, adopt the re recommendation. Okay, so, second. Uh, thank you, second. Staff. Roll call, please, Erica. Okay, roll call for item 6C, Commissioner Vanderlyn? Yes. Commissioner Wells? Yes. Commissioner Vargas? Yes. Commissioner Desmond? Yes. Commissioner Kate? Yes. Commissioner Willis? Aye. Commissioner Salas? Yes. Oh, wait a minute. Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, Commissioner McKenzie? Did she leave Keene? I believe she left, yes. Okay. Can um, alternate Commissioner Lump vote in place yes. of Commissioner McKenzie? Yeah. Okay, Commission, Commissioner Lump? Aye. Thank you. So eight in favor with zero opposed, the motion passes. Okay, thank you for your endurance here, Commission. Okay, we're now at uh, 7A has been taken off, is that correct? Correct. Uh, next up in the uh, agenda uh, chair is the executive officer report. I will do my best. I do have things I, I wanted to get on the radar uh, for all of you. Uh, first, um, I wanted to note that uh, uh, the commission gave staff unanimous direction, of course, in December to start working on a legislative fix as it relates to LAFCOs uh, being uh, clearly designated in statute as the authority that decides when and when not uh, local agencies need to uh, come before you to get approval to provide services outside their boundaries. Uh, work has commenced. Uh, your staff has met with uh, stakeholders ranging from uh, CSDA, the, the California Special Districts Association, uh, certainly other LAFCOs. Uh, and I think uh, right now we have about three LAFCOs uh, who have joined us and I would anticipate another five or six uh, by the next meeting, uh, specifically El Dorado, uh, El Dorado, Orange, and Riverside have all taken formal action at their commission supporting uh, our efforts, and I uh, expect others will join us. And then we've also talked uh, to uh, some local legislators. All of this to say, Commission, uh, we are working on it, and the goal is uh, to be firmly in the queue to perhaps introduce something in 2022. Uh, separately, uh, for those who have not had enough LAFCO today, at 1.30, uh, we are going to have the next meeting of the ad hoc committee on the Fallbrook Rainbow proposals. Of course, these are the proposals 
amongst other things that they are seeking to detach themselves from the San Diego County Water Authority. Uh, today's meeting will be live streamed again at 1.30. And we are gonna dive a little further into the details through our consultant, uh, Michael Hanneman, uh, a UC Berkeley professor. And we're gonna talk about water rate impacts and we're gonna talk about potential uh, exit fees or departure fees. And as uh, the commissioners can attest uh, both sides, right? You have the Water Authority and their supporters on one side, you have Rainbow, Fallbrook on the other, have wildly different takes about what water rate impacts would be and what potential exit fees should be. So uh, that will be at 1.30. Um, third, this might require a little more discussion, uh, Chair, uh, but nevertheless, it's probably about time I put on the Commission's radar that uh, we need to start thinking about um, housing LAFCO. Our lease, our 10-year lease at the uh, Kearney Mesa uh, campus with the County of uh, San Diego is coming to an end in August. And despite being impeccable tenants with minimal complaints uh, by our neighbors at probation, uh, the county, I think, would like to take that spot back as they need to uh, spread out their own workforce for obvious reasons, physical spacing. And so the question is, well, what do we do? And so uh, my question for the commission is certainly staff could go about uh, looking at options and bringing those forward to you. Uh, or if there is interest, uh, the commission through the chair could create an ad hoc committee uh, to look at office, um, uh, space uh, options for us. Uh, and they would be the ones then that would bring back a recommendation. Uh, my own take is if there is interest, uh, an ad hoc committee might be nice because if we're going to start looking at options and for our life, we've always been part of the County of San Diego's uh, physical space. Maybe this is the time we look at buying our own office building. Uh, I'm pretty sure LAFCA will be here in 20, 30, 40 years. And so at what point does the commission want to stop being renters and start being a landlord? So just food for thought, and, and we could perhaps get some feedback, Chair, on that topic. But I did want to, in my last comment, uh, and I just found this out uh, this weekend, uh, Erin Lump, who has been a wonderful alternate uh, commissioner, she's uh, on the uh, call right now, representing special districts in Rincon del Diablo, my neighbor in Escondido, uh, this is her last meeting. She'll be leaving us uh, as she pursues other opportunities out of state. So I just wanted to say on behalf of staff, Aaron, how much we enjoy getting to work with you. Indeed. And how much, uh, you've been uh, a, a, a help to staff in getting things done. So those are my comments. Uh, and again, Aaron, thank you so much for your time at LAFCO. Where are you going, Aaron? Thank you. Where are you going? I'm moving, my family and I are moving to Arkansas. Arkansas. Yeah, wow. we're excited for our well, adventure. You, well, when you make changes, you make big ones. <laughs> yeah, why not? When you can work remote, you you really look at things and mix it up. And I'm going to have 350 open acres of bicycle trails and hiking trails in my backyard. Yeah. And it's pretty enticing. Wow. Thank you very much, Aaron, for serving us. We we'll look forward to seeing Thank you. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you for the opportunity. It's been great. I've learned a lot and enjoyed working with staff and you, my fellow commissioners. Thank you so much. Governor Lump sounds pretty good, Arkansas. What I'm going to be voting for Huckabee pretty soon. But <laughs> there you go. That's right. That's right, Sarah. That's right. Yeah. Sarah's going to get around. Okay. Thank you. Just a couple things for me. One is that uh, the uh, in the packet on pages 265 to 273 is uh, a piece put together by keen that kind of gives you a laugh go 101 our purpose when we were formed and all of that so i'm going to talk to keen we might do on um, when i get my gag together we have a shorter meetings perhaps have a little left one interspersed at, at our uh, board meetings also i just got an order that you can ask to do to put together a uh, index for our package our package that uh not very organized person but i'm going through the the packet, I can refer to page number, and was referred to by page number once today too, so might help us if you would like that. Anything else from any other uh, commissioners? Uh, I was just gonna ask Keen, how much uh, how much could we save on the rent? 
<laughs> you know, uh, I, I don't know. That's part of the open. We've never really <laughs> yeah. looked into this. Uh, I would say that, you know, over the next 10 years, you're going to spend on rent probably a million dollars. So the question is, at what point do you want to think about buying? So right, right. I will defer to uh, the chair if, if there, there's interest in an ad hoc committee. Um, we would certainly benefit from it. If not, uh, we'll do our best at staff to, to give you uh, good options. I'm sorry, I jumped right over that. Is there any, anyone like to serve on a committee that would look to explore options for our office space? I would. If I, I would. If, if if I could jump in here just as what a matter. Do you want to matter. serve on the Holly? <laughs> yeah, just, to, just as a matter, if we could uh, put the um, appointment of an ad hoc committee on the future agenda. Okay. That's my recommendation. Thank you. So be thinking about that. Let it lean on you, okay. like my dad used to say. Okay, any other comments from commissioners? Okay, we'll, we, we adjourn to the closed session. Is that right, Holly? Okay, so unless there's no other business for us, we'll adjourn to the closed session. Yes, and uh, I adjourn. believe uh, uh, the, uh, what we can do is all the commissioners, regular and alternate, stay on board. Everyone else will get booted off by due. And then uh, we will come back uh, uh, and report out uh, any actions, although none are expected. Uh, does that sound about right, Holly? That does. And we're, we're going in a closed session um, as set forth in the agenda um, under government code section, of uh, various sections, but 54956.9D1 for two um, pending litigation cases. And under 54956.9D4 for potential initiation of litigation with one potential case. And finally, under government code section 54956.9D2, uh, significant exposure to litigation. Um, so those are the, the, the four items we're gonna consider under those three government code sections. Okay, thank you. So we're now and, um, uh, do is the only one other than uh, me and Holly on staff to stay on board. So do if everyone else can be uh, placed in a holding room and then if you can confirm once we're secure, uh, Holly can proceed. Hi, uh, let's take a five minute break while I do that. So everyone, all the commissioners can stay on and uh, Keen and our staff can stay in the waiting room. And okay. I'll let Andy know when we're back on or the closed session. Okay, thank sounds you. good. Okay, thank you, Du. So you have a break. Maybe